Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we got an exciting one for you guys tonight. It's not just the girls as it has been for the last couple weeks, but I mean, hey, episode 69 was a banger. If you haven't heard that, you definitely got to go back. But for this week's show, we got a couple awesome guests. Uh, they just won themselves a pro spot and they probably got some things that they want to say. And we definitely will be picking their brains in a little bit. But first, I got to bring in our host, Stephen Hatch. What is going on, man? Oh, man, dude, I am missing being out at the field all the time because, dude, it's no it's way hard for me to access a field. You know, uh, I got I got to drive three hours for, to get up to Capital Edge, but I am missing it like goddamn crazy. So, yeah, man, it's going to be it's, uh, it's kind of the winter time. It starts to get uh, cold and depressing. So without a doubt. <laughs> well, uh, he's definitely bundled up for it. Brandon Brando Baird. What's going on, my guy? Hey, guys. Um, glad to be here after again the, the the great show we had last week um the, the misdemeanor yeah, that we committed last week i feel like uh, hey hey hey, hey. I thought we're, it was fine. We're, we're still monetized we're good <laughs> we we're are here. somehow so, <laughs> yeah you know check that out but there's a reason why we do it at the end <laughs> for sure uh we're still not gonna name it here um jumping into the show this week like i said we do have our two guests uh we have a couple other things that we gotta talk about later on um and we actually have a kind of a cool announcement that's going to be happening at the end of the show so hey you gotta stay around to the end if you want to hear that as well as our code word of the week and all the fun uh banter and stuff that we're going to be talking about let's without wasting any more time let's bring in our guest for the show uh i am gonna go seniority on this one too we've had him on the show before uh he's definitely uh i don't know he's he's one of the dirtiest players i've seen but uh damn he makes it look good out there uh what, what's going on scott stewart how, how you doing buddy doing good doing good excited to be on again guys thanks for having us super stoked fun yeah. season really fun season Oh, I bet. <laughs> yeah, I bet. no, I could imagine. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and, you know, just to bring him on into the show as well, we got a newcomer to the show. We're glad uh, he actually he filled in last minute for us today. We were supposed to have someone else from PB Fit who will remain nameless because we're not slandering them. But uh, thanks to uh, <laughs> Jonathan Chavez for coming in last second. Uh, definitely appreciate I it, man. How, how, how you doing, bro? How's your Tuesday been? I'm doing good, man. Uh, first off, appreciate you having me on here. Um, honored to be here. And, you know, it's a good good Tuesday. You know, simple work day, pretty much half a day, and enjoyed the weather. It wasn't too bad. So I was able to come home and just able to chill. Nice, man. So, I mean, you already got the Christmas spirit going on in the background. It's not even December uh, yet, brother. Dude, that's, uh, that's all my wife. That's oh, okay. All yeah, there, there you go. That's, <laughs> that's the easy. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Hard. Like, I, I got out there because she was trying to play before Thanksgiving. Like, hold on. You got to no. give Thanksgiving some love first. So, yep. yeah, we got to eat turkey. One thing, threw one thing for pillow out. I'm like, I'll take it. That's a, I'll take it. Whatever. <laughs> that's but a compromise. Now we're full Christmas. Yeah, it's compromise. It's compromise. <laughs> well, so, for sure, we're man. I got to get some Christmas decorations up in here, dude. I, I got my Christmas Pablo. Mark, you saw some lights around Pablo. <laughs> yes, dude. Some Chris I got to get a nice golden wreath around him. That'd be there a good go. one. Also, shout out the Austin Odie banner made its way uh, oh, home. Moved it. I, I also added another jersey here, a Danny McClinton jersey. That's, oh, that's a, a good one. That's a gem for sure. So, you know, it's a special place in my heart. So shout out to Danny. Dude, your your background gets better and better by the week, Hatch. We're like, slowly if, learning, if you we got started the giveaway, at the, the first episode. Right here, dude. We got the giveaway gift right here. I got to get a blackout curtain instead of the goddamn sheet of shame. <laughs> so one of these days you know we're, we're gonna put uh, stuff around it before we actually change like the curtain exactly ring. exactly <laughs> welcome so. to men decorating uh mm. and brandon you're still in the stepbrothers bunk bed asylum yeah yeah um, the makeshift bunk beds it's more room for activities we've already talked about this this is for the flood this is for the flood <laughs> the winter with the, the when everyone's green, water pipes really freeze and snap we're yeah you guys are gonna be okay oh my exactly God. All right. Well, without further ado, let's uh, let's bring this in to paintball a little bit. Um, I mean, this question's for both of you guys, so you know, feel free to both of you to, uh, to respond to it. But I mean, everyone's talking about, it, everyone's thinking about it. You guys went five for five, um, and that's something that we have not seen in this modern era of paintball, and especially we've never seen at this high level of paintball. I mean, you guys could definitely talk to it. These boys can definitely talk to it semi-pro paintball is no joke right now uh it is a hard division yeah. to be competitive and to be good at um and you know i i just want to you know start off with how do you feel being on the team that made that achievement possible i'll let, I'll let scott go first seniority you know seniority. <laughs> <All right. laughs> uh i think it's 
it's pretty crazy to think about it as far as you know thinking the the feat that we accomplished right while you're doing it it doesn't feel as crazy it just feels like you know you're stepping through the process of like hey this is what we got to do to reach our goal uh and obviously five for five was part of the goal we talked about that last time we were mm-hmm. on that we wanted to absolutely dominate we didn't want it to be a question of like who should have exactly. got the pro this year so like all of that was part of the process but looking back on it after the fact it's it still is hard to believe that we actually pulled off five in a row like it's like wow that's so so hard like winning any division like i still tell people all the time like it doesn't matter what division you're in winning a division winning an event in any division of paintball is hard to do like a lot of things have to go right so to know that we were able to do that five times in a row is just insane just absolutely insane and i think you you do touch on a great factor there because you know i've heard this saying in sports before when the a's won 20 it was something that a lot of people said you guys could go back and run those tournaments, exact same players, exact same, you know, time, situation, everything, and do it, you know, a hundred times. And you guys probably only win five for five a handful of those times. Because in right. paintball, there's there's so many factors. You know, there's there's so many kind of things that you can't necessarily control. Did that ball yes. that hit you actually break? Did it leave enough of a mark that the ref actually saw it to pull you out? Did that happen, you know, vice versa to the other team? Did they get a minor when it should be a major? Did they get a major when it should be a minor? Because goddamn, semi-pro refing is uh, it's shit. <laughs> um, so it, it's one of those things that just, just doing that, it, it, it's improbable but it's also there's luck to it there is there's that little bit of the right things for sure keep going mm-hmm. the right way um i mean shavi yep. how, how did you feel about going through that experience uh this is pretty much like uh, to reiterate what scott said like you know in the moment you know it like kind of didn't hit but as as it was happening that's when i really felt it like for sure after that like the final point is just it for sure flooded me just because of all the hard work we've done as a team, mm-hmm. you know, the sacrifices we've all made, you know, I miss lots of family gatherings, you know, for practices that weren't layout practice weekends, you know, and it, and it just all hit me. And it's just, it just feels so good to like see what you wanted to, wanted your end goal to be, especially, you know, it being all year. And like I said, it gets all those factors, you know, the refing, the pain, you know, how the layout is set up, you know, there was fields we played, like, I mean, y'all not, y'all played all day. There was a field yeah. of slanted, yeah. like yep. a field of straight up slanted. <laughs> like, so like, there's so many factors in it. And just for us to overcome all those factors together as a team, you know, it's, this is a whole other accomplishment because any, any team can lose a term and be like, I'm done. You know, that's it. We can't do it, whatever. But we just keep on going. That's our thing. Like we'll get punched, but we, we punch back for sure. It, so, it, amen and and i think you know it really comes down to like we've seen in the past there's been teams uh you know aftermath did a really good job when they promoting themselves uh dmg when they were coming through semi-pro i think they won four for five that year but they still had a tournament where they fell and got ninth and it, it you know yeah. those dudes were savages it was thomas kim you know freaking josh yeah. halberg like shane how yeah. these are all guys who are freaking <laughs> savage paintball players not a doubt but you 100%. know still it can it can happen where you know the the chips don't fully fall into you know your 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 hands um so yeah it, it's a special thing i mean for for you to have that release of emotions it is 100% like earned and deserved i mean everyone on that team in a way you guys you know you guys have all kind of put your names into paintball history books a little bit you know when when people think back of well has there been a perfect season or you know has any team ever done that it's going to be PB fit that they pull up and, you know, see, Oh, who, who was on that team? Where did they go? And, you know, those are kind of the starts of that legacy in the game. And, uh, yeah, no, it's, it's something unbelievable. And you guys, you know, should definitely be proud of that achievement and the hard work put into to have it. Thank you. Thank you. It's crazy. Cause the next, the next crazy thing is like doing five for five in pro. Uh, right. Okay. Yeah. Like, imagine yeah. that shit. Look, I, <laughs> so even Dynasty, when they were in 2004, destroying everyone, Excessive still won one event. Like it's yeah. it's the type of thing where Dude. that is so unbelievably hard. So exactly. Yeah. So kudos to you guys. You guys played lights out. I was lo- I was lucky enough to be uh, in the pits during your guys' finals match. So it was it was awesome to see. You know. <laughs> so uh, it was nice seeing. <laughs> 
you guys, your guys' reaction when Jackson Frey came to the middle, and you guys were like, "All right, all right, it's coming back." <laughs> And so that that was just absolutely bonkers to witness. So I, yeah. I was blessed on, you know, I got to take notes in my head mentally because uh, I was watching you guys. I was watching you guys' footage and the way you guys are preparing everything. And, you know, I'm taking notes for myself because you guys are that good. Seriously. Thank you. Thank you. Well, it's it's funny, too. I, I filmed I was able to get that moment on camera um, and I, there was that energy shift. And I know probably anyone who stood in those pits felt that energy shift. You know, Colt. Colt was kind of pissed off that you know he came through and Shavi, your fuck that shit that kind of started that like all right like you know and everyone i think in the pits at that moment started to understand okay like we're, we're gonna go beat these kids like we have all season because now they've made this game about more than just us trying to win five now it's oh okay you're gonna put extra on us you're gonna try to do it like that we're gonna now show you why you know You've been second all year, and it was uh, like that scene. It was like that scene from uh, Infinity Infinity War. Oh where my he's god! Like, all that for a drop of blood, and like wipes off the little drop. That was you guys. That was you guys in the finals for sure. So that was so badass. Yeah, big Thanos energy going on there, without a doubt. They, they just couldn't do my my boy Halo Lizard King like that. Uh uh Nah. Well, <laughs> Scott, you had a hard ass moment in that too, bro, because you took one Dude. straight to the Adam's apple. To the didn't it even move no reaction i was like scott pissed scott's ready to kill someone i saw the replay of that i was like yo <laughs> i was like i would flinch 400 percent but that man's like mm -mm. i was like all right he's unfazed dude god damn when you look at him he's unfazed but dude. god damn well, for sure dude. hey uh hatch uh why don't you throw in one of your questions i know you had a couple lined up tonight all right so one thing that you guys have a crazy experience from that is once in a career for sure. I mean, you guys were part of the AC Dallas organization during that relegation. You guys played all of semi-pro, uh, barely missed it by the cusp and said, fuck that. Now that you win five in a row, like what is the big shift from being in pro coming back down to semi-pro? And then now you guys are, you guys obviously figured it out to where you guys are going back up again. And I, I will say before you guys answer, I think it is important to know how many teams have been relegated in, in any fashion, even if it's a different team name, and have come back up to pro. None. Yeah, I don't, I don't think it's so, ever happened. I don't think, yeah. I think, so whenever I, I think that's yeah, important to say. Expanded. Right, so I think that that is, is a statement in enough. I mean, you, you guys... I, I, or I mean, excuse my French, but it's like you guys were the worst pro team that year to where now you guys are the most dominant semi pro team by far. And now you guys are going up. Like, what is that experience? Like, what is the what is the big difference between uh, those stepping stones of learning how to be that unit at, on as a team? If that makes any Honestly. sense. <laughs> Scott, go first again. Seniority. <laughs> <laughs> You're always going to go first, by the way, just let you know. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, Chavi yeah. has more experience about what playing pro was because I didn't really play very much. But uh, that season was definitely a lot of learning, I feel like. Um, even those guys before I was playing with them, they were playing D2, I think, the year before. And that was the COVID year. So, I mean, they played, what, two one events? Event. Yeah, yeah, one Start event. And cup. Like a weird cup event, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like, man, that's, that's nothing. You know, they didn't even really get to play D2. So that pro year is like a D2 year. Then you go play semi-pro the next year, do good, but you don't make it. And then you play semi-pro again. I mean, it felt like just a, a regular progression. And obviously we played as a different team and played in, in pro for that middle year there or that first year. But it still, for me at least, was definitely just like learning and, and really understanding situations and understanding like how things would get break, broken down by some of the best players to break down the game. You know, and kind of learning that and then taking it and trying to do it yourself a bunch of times in semi-pro for two whole seasons, right? And starting to figure out where you can make those moves and where you can't or where you can take those chances and where you can't. Like, and everybody's pushing each other to be better every practice, every event, every little, you know, local event, big event, doesn't matter. Like, we take it all seriously because we're all competitive people and that really pushes everyone to be better. So I feel like that's what it's been since the AC Dallas year that we had there through these last two years too. Nice. Okay. That's a great, that's a great way of putting it, dude. Seriously. What about you, Chavi? How would you, how was your pro experience in going playing semi pro for two years and just dominating? Tell me about that. Uh, you know, um, pro experience was definitely something. 
Um, you know, I for sure wasn't the player I was now than I was then. You know, that year was definitely, you know, a huge growth year for me, you know, just just in general and just as a paintball player, mm-hmm. you know. And just and just actually seeing like, you know, the boys, like the Luke boys, putting in the faith of me as, you know, their one Dorito player, even though I honestly didn't have as nearly as good experience as them, you know, because I didn't really rise up the ranks with them, with PB Fit, whenever, you know, they were winning in D4 and D3, you know, I joined in their D2 year. Like, that was my first time gotcha. with them, you know. And, so, and, and before that, I really wasn't, like, you know, super, like, crazy. Like, I... Like just joining them in general just helped me out, but um, just in general, like I, like just picking back off Scott, you know, just what made it better for us was that it was we we all pushed each other. You know, there was times where we didn't want to practice, but we still did. You know, we didn't want to wake up super early, but you know, we were texting each other, you know, in the morning or like in our little group chat that we have. It was like, good morning, guys. You know, like five thirty six in the morning. You know, just yep. trying to push each other because that's what it takes, you know, to, to win. You know, because everybody can sleep in and then go play later, but not everybody can get up and do that extra time, do that extra work to perfect what you're trying to do, you know. There's times where in practice, uh, when we would be practicing and we'd win a point, but we'd still be upset at ourselves because we could have won it better. You know, it's just that that little aspects of it, what I love about fit and just us guys as teammates slash, I think, brothers, is that no matter what, we're just always pushing each other, you know, just to do better, you know. So and that's just that's what helped me is because helped me in general throughout this whole, you know, pro year, you know, getting relegated or whatnot. And then also seeing all pretty much the quote unquote hate online, you know, the comments honestly helped fuel me to be fair. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. Like most people like, yeah, I can tear some people down. But for me, it just pissed me off because I'm like, that's not really fair. You know, like we kind of got like forced to the pro spot and then Mm -hmm. we had a fight, fight while we're there. And then people are still like really against us. You guys are punching up, you know, you guys are punching straight up. Yeah, and so like we're, we get it. Like we got we have poo pooed on, you know. <laughs> but uh, yeah. that 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 comes with it. We never that comes with not you know actually preparing and just jump straight into the shits. Pro is a different animal. I agree. You know, it's it's going to be a huge step for us, but I think we can take that step no problem. I you know one thing I want to point out there, um, it, it, because th- there was a lot of things you said that are traits that I also saw in the same group of players in DMG this year. And I think that's why a lot of that squad went from being a D3 experience team to, okay, we're, you know, we could play in semi-pro this year. And a lot of it was that, you know, guys checking in on each other. What, what was the sentence you guys would say back and forth to each other? Was it like, are, were you an asshole today? Or were you a piece oh, of shit today? Oh, were you a piece of shit? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So in group chat, yeah. they would be like, hey, were you a piece of shit? Meaning like, did you go and run your, you know, mile? Did you get up? Like, did you get in the gym? Like, it's that checking in and that kind of constant, like, fuck i'm no longer doing this for me i'm doing this because if you know if i fucking cramp up at the tournament brandon's gonna be pissed at me and i don't want to make brandon yeah. pissed at me because i love brando he's my teammate you know like it's, it, it becomes more of a you're no longer just fighting for yourself and i think that's when you know that's when people become dangerous when you're you're I, fighting I for something else and it's like it would be so embarrassing where it's like me and brando you know huffing and puffing like over time like yo brando i need you and he goes I can't. Could not be me, bro. Could not, <laughs> not be me. me. <laughs> Could not be me. So would never. I definitely I think that that's never. a huge motivating factor to where it's like, you know, you want to be able to play every single point and make sure that you're, you know, taking care of the team. You know, the weight, I like to call it. 100%. And so, but no. <laughs> yeah, for sure, man. <laughs> um, I think, you know, and, and that answers, you know, one of my other questions I was going to ask is like, you know, what do you guys think about being in the team that makes PB fit a, a special organization, or at least, you know, the, the group of guys that, that could do an a, a achievement like this. And I, I think you talked on some of that, but I'm, did you either of you have anything else to add for that? Man, um, I think it's just been a lot of fun and it's going to be an awesome memory to look back on, you know, like just going through all of it together will be a lot of fun to look back on in a lot of years, you know, did you, wait, so Scott, Scott, I'm sorry, I have to stop you. Did you just say you had fun while playing paintball? 
and that was a part of the reason why you won no 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 definitely not that no oh because we could never have fun we got to be serious we have to be yelling at each other constantly yes (laughs) and i think that's the problem in paypal right now there's there's so many people who view this as a job (laughs) i said straight up when we all go to bed we're so serious that we all send pictures straight up just like yeah, yeah, just keeping <laughs> coffin mode. Coffin mode is like if we if, they, if we don't send each other a fit, then we're like, mm, nope. You cut <laughs> next to bed. You're out. All right. No, okay. I'm so kidding. No, no, but I'm, I'm, start, I'm, I'm start something like that. I'm gonna start something like that. <laughs> God damn it, Ash. No, I, I I just want to bring up though that that is something that I'm glad yeah. you said because hey, if we look at the four time you know we're reigning world champion, they fucking have fun. They don't take paintball as seriously as like, I'm not going to eat if I fucking miss this tournament. (laughs) Look, that that is motivation and that probably drives some people up. But at the end of the day, if all your teammates are like, I do not want to be at the paintball field. How how do you expect to be successful? Like, how how do you expect to have the same motivation level to wake up at 6am to get out there? If every time they're doing that, they're like, uh, this fucking sucks. I wish I was in bed. I wish I was doing anything else. It's fucking Sunday. I wish I could watch football. Fuck, fuck yeah. paintball. And then they get out there. They play like shit during their reps. They don't want to help anyone. They just kind of piss everyone nope. off. And and it just starts that negative cycle within the team. Ew, bro. Ew. <laughs> that that Ew. stuff does not survive, bro. That stuff does not survive around, you know, like people who seriously want to be competitive. It does not survive. And it gets weeded out quick and, we find out who the bubble blower is for sure and there's a hundred percent there's a, a line between you know we're having fun but there's that switch that can flip you know if we're going into a game yeah we're being serious we're not you know it's not thinking about other things we're thinking about our opponent our game plans and how we're gonna win the match but yeah. you know there's also got to be that light-hearted levity in between matches and the ability to you know chuck a joke out every now and then yeah. Oh yeah. What, what are you boys making eye contact game. about? I, I I had I had a laugh. I laughed because with the the whole switch thing. So there was. I'm bringing this up because it's pretty funny. We didn't have to delete it. So one time <laughs> we were actually losing a match. I was and... gonna say. <laughs> you guys kept making eye contact. I knew something was going on. <laughs> it, was, it was literally like we're like oh shit. So um, where was it? Was it Texas or no? It was Philly. <laughs> I think it was Chicago. It was one of those. I can't remember. It was in the middle. They're, they're all just blending in. Um, we, didn't, we didn't lose the match, but it was, we didn't lose the match. Match where it was pretty it was, close. It was a close so, match. It was rough. We weren't Chicago. playing our paintball, and um, we play Clash of Clans pretty much as a group. Like, <laughs> okay. all of us is fit. We legit... That's it. Call it All co- right. Cock commandos. We call it cock yeah. commandos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Okay, okay. I like hey, this. sometimes you got to guard your cock, you know? <laughs> I agree. Hey, hey. So... We were losing the match, whatnot, and then we were like, you know, just like thinking of what, like, what's going on, blah blah blah. And Johnny, he's like the, pretty much the head honcho. Like he's he when shit gets serious, like he's like that's a serious guy. Like he he can get pretty serious, and like you can say, like you can see in his face and his eyes, it's like all right, oh shit. But we were losing, and then he was looking around to us, and all of a sudden, it's like if we don't <laughs> if we don't fix our shit now. And turn this around, we all had to delete Clash off our phones. And <laughs> no, basically, all, bro. all of us were like, oh no. Oh, and bro, we turned it straight around. <laughs> it was, like, that's why I had to laugh from a serious to like, a, to, to turn it straight serious because that literally, like, we were like, oh no. And dude, dude I'm still clashing. Like, I got it on my phone. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah dude. That was amazing. Oh, God, I respect the, the grind. We're dude, we're good, man. So. Yeah, dude, I want to clash. Let us know, Adji. Dude, the other the <laughs> other people that are like listening to this that were like uh, that were against you guys that lost because of Clash of Clans are like fuck Clash of Clans. They're like I like Clash Royale. Right right Goddamn, <laughs> done all my gems. But that's definitely my favorite just story, just because just all our faces and then we're all like oh shit and just just straight serious and it was a straight turnaround. I swear. There's no way you <laughs> lose awesome. after saying that. There's no way. There was no way. Yeah. And like Johnny was super serious. We know he's serious. And we just like looked at each other, looked at him. We're like, fuck. And just we're like, we got it. So and and I mean, it's a question from that, and, and maybe you guys can answer this because mm-hmm. you know, when everyone sees pit footage of fit, everyone obviously is drawn to, you know colt talking because he is kind of a big kind of leader and and dude who's talking on the team and i think that was important there that you talked like johnny i think is he the guy where it's uh you know he doesn't necessarily talk all the time 
but it's like when he says stuff everyone listens and everyone is like oh shit all right like that's that's kind of go time like i guess how is that relationship between the two of them because i know they're both big you know guys on the team and kind of you know i don't, I don't want to say captains but does that kind of metaphor yeah. make more sense like they are the big kind of vo- the vocal leader of the team you know yeah I, but, I, I mean okay Ash. i could agree yeah they're they're the captains with with you know because they practically run you know hydra fit like that's mm-hmm. the guys along with jd and of course in the family but um you know, Cole's definitely like that bring it energy guy, you know, 100%. Every time, like, whenever he's like, you know, F that, F this, like, I love to feed off of that because mm-hmm. it just makes me want to, like, sorry to say this, but hurt the other team, you know, if whoever's listening. Like, I'm sorry, oh, I but like, like hurt. No, that's I valid. like that talk, brother. That's valid. <laughs> and, and so, like, hurt the other team, but not because, like, you know, like, trying to hurt him to hurt him. Like, I'm trying to hurt him to win, you know, like, I'm winning okay. with a statement. You know, that's that's my thing. And whenever Cole brings that, and especially, like, you know, you know, whenever it comes to, like, our practices, you know, it, it kind of does get kind of hot because we do F up our jobs, like, you know, and let people come buck or Cole, and he gets, you know, he gets F'd up. You know, he gets shot a lot. Yeah. And that's just and that's just because, you know, he's just always going out the middle trying to break stuff open. And so, like, he'll come off just, just heated, which I understand because, you know, he's getting shot a lot, but we also F'd up on our jobs. Mm-hmm. And so that, that's his aspect of it. But with Johnny, okay. you know, I, with him, he's like, like the eagle eye. Like he sees stuff that like, I don't know how he does, but he just, he has the eye. Like he's pretty much the all seeing eye of fit. Like <laughs> gotcha. he, mm-hmm. whenever it comes to like, you know, field breakdowns or whatnot, I just, we're just always discussing, you know, he's always discussing on how to, you know, do this, you know, do that. Or, you know, he's always discuss- uh, talking with Casey, you know, like, hey, we should do this instead of that, you know, to break open the field and to help us, you know, win, win the points. Um, and so with them two combined, it's just phenomenal because you got Cole who brings the fire, you know, phenomenal gun off the break and who can actually break open the field pretty damn well. And who's smart on the field is kind of insane. You know, I've actually learned a lot from him on just breaking open, you know, on the D side. You know, and then Johnny is just that, like, just sees all. He's just like, okay, maybe try this, this, because this guy can do that job, you know. And so just them two together definitely helps us, you know, um, with our succession in the semi pro and winning, you know, the tournaments. Yeah. And so. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, they're, and it makes sense too, you know, they're brothers, you know, little brother, older brother, you know, they're, they kind of got the different, you know, thing, uh, way, I, I don't know the exact way to say it, but they they kind of prioritize different things, probably because you know, mm-hmm. growing up, you know, maybe all right, Johnny was the, the always the kind of analytical one, so yeah, Cole, you know, started all right, <laughs> let's get some energy going in this, you know, and it's kind oh, of that like it, it creates kind of both of them <laughs> to uh, you know a specific extent, uh, just being brothers. Mm-hmm. I mean, we see that with uh, another great example is Jordan Boyum and Dylan Boyum. Uh, Dylan Boyum is a freaking firecracker who you know he he plays with his heart on his sleeve. And Jordan is an analytical, you know, stat, you know, tactician. It. Yeah, it's it's just straight. It's just you know, I'm I'm gonna figure out my job and I'm gonna do it to the best of my ability. And <laughs> and uh, you know, shout out Javo, we love him on the show. But um, yeah. So no, it, it's a very interesting role when you see brothers playing a sport, you know, at this high level together. Yeah, Especially three of them, you don't see that very often. Yep. Yeah. I, and also, I think for I count Trent as a brother with him too, because he grew up with it whenever like he was young. And he's yeah, he's kind of the ex- extended family kind of like yeah, like he's yeah. he's right he's there. He's our cousin, and... but like he's 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 family. So, but like yeah. him, him had it on with you know Cole and Johnny, like them three just all together can break down the field pretty darn well. So yeah. I mean, when, uh, you know, when people talk about, you know, these, some of these historical teams, there's the core dudes who kind of like, you know, bring that. And then, you know, there's the, you know, guys who maybe they filter in later, like you were saying, Xavi, you know, like, Hey, I only joined during kind of the D2 time, but you're just as, you know, integral in the game now as, you know, uh, you know, maybe someone else who, you know, ended up leaving the team, you know, for whatever reason, like it's, you know, there, there's always kind of going to be the, those positions that need filled. And I think, that's one of the things that's been crazy from uh pb fit um who uh i actually don't know him too well but uh his first name caleb uh what's, what's yes. his last name basically 
basically i think he's a great example of a guy who like i you know i really haven't heard much from but you know he showed up at world cup and i think he you know put his name on the map and showed that all right these boys believe in me i'm gonna go show why you know i should be on this team and and you know fucking win in these tournaments yeah that's why he's a lizard king (laughs) <laughs> gotcha the lizard king dude your guys' nicknames are some of the best i gotta give you guys that <laughs> we try man well to, to give a little backstory he does actually like sell lizards as like a thing and like they're like like not like just lizards they're like the super badass like you see the pictures are like cool colors he's like, like a like, reptile oh, dealer yeah, yeah pretty much oh, he's like, <laughs> deals with some tegus okay so he's, he's a he's a the very texas thing <laughs> oh dude, dude. dude whenever i heard about it i'm like all right, man, I'll support you. He's like, You're one like of my okay. closest friends. And I'm like, all right, let's go. Let's see these lizards. <laughs> let's see them. Dude. So does he have like crazy exotic lizards like all the time? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he actually, um, he has a garage dedicated just for his lizards. Is it, that is he like is a breeder? So or is he like, just like kind of, I don't know. I think invest he, he in go, the lizards he, and resell he, them or like what? <laughs> he for sure. I know he for sure invests and resells. I don't know about the whole breeding, but like he goes to the whole expos, everything like visit okay. expos. Like one weekend he wasn't here um, in the off season and he's like, sorry guys, there's a, there's a lizard expo this weekend. <laughs> I gotta go to it. I'm like, you do you think, man. You do you. I, <laughs> Whatever that you gotta do, sick. bro. <laughs> so, but no, he's he's good. He's good, man. That's dope. The Lizard King of Wachahatchee, Texas, or however the hell you say the name that uh, Fit is located in. Yeah. <laughs> I remember when I was heading down there for Mech X, I was like, what the fuck is this city? <laughs> Dude. There's not that much there. No, really not much yeah. there. Just kind of on the outskirts of Dallas for those who haven't been. Um, <laughs> But uh, but yeah, guys. Uh, I know Hatch. You had a couple more. Uh, Brandon, did you have anything you wanted to ask the boys tonight? Oh yeah, yeah. I got a couple. Go ahead. Um, yeah. So, just want to see. Like to know it, what really separated you guys from you know the other semi pro teams. You even top top semi pro teams. You know, Blast Camp newbies. Um, you know, the top uh, top six or whatnot. Uh. Can you really get into to what do you think really separated you guys? Uh, I think a lot of it is how to break down a field and really understanding all of the progressions. Uh, I feel mm-hmm. like that was a consistent thing we kind of saw, at least for how we felt like you needed to play the fields. A consistency, consistent thing we saw as we went to the event was Teams weren't playing it the way we thought they should be playing it. They'd be getting the spot, but not taking the right move to the right shot from those spots. So it didn't, like, I felt like that was seen a lot. And not saying we're just, like, super smart, but we spend so much time on the field on not only that layout, but on so many layouts that we've seen so many situations. I think that plays a big part of how we're breaking these down. That and, like, Chavi was saying, Holt and Johnny and Trenton are really really great minds to try and work with as far as breaking down layouts and just understanding the game and how situations are going to break down. So as we just go through even the layout practices, those guys are really helping us understand like the ins and outs of what happened. Because you obviously only get so much, right? You got one fifth of the picture if you have everybody alive and you're trying to put it together, but you're still only getting it from your angle where maybe coach is standing up top, you know, Casey's up there and he's watching, so he tells you something. And then you bring that to Johnny and Trenton and those guys, we all have a conversation about it. And they talk about what they could see and what what they thought would be best too. And I feel like just that process of consistently doing that, not only on layout weekends, but all the time is really what made the difference in my opinion. Uh, Obviously there's, you know, on the break shooting and communication and, and stuff like that. I also feel like we have some of the best players around too. Like I, I would trust any of these guys in almost any situation. Like, you know, I wouldn't, if it's a one-on-one, I wouldn't be like, oh, who is it? I'd be like, oh, it's a one-on-one, we're good. Like, we're going to win that. You know, like, I don't worry about who's out there. I just say, how many do we still have? Oh, there's still three of us, and they have two, they have three, they even have four. Okay, I feel comfortable now. You know, like, Mm -hmm. that part's obviously going to help as well. But I think the difference maker, in my opinion, is how we break down those fields. Okay. Very well said. Very well said. And pretty much, yeah, and just just feedback off what Scott said is just that is just just breaking down the field and that aspect of it. And you know, with us too, is 
watching, you know, teams' tendencies on what they do and where they go, you know. And so, because you can only go to a certain amount of spots, certain amount of mm-hmm. times. Mm-hmm. So it's like, boy, he goes to the next one. You know, you gotta just, we pretty much just watch. You know, we just, mm-hmm. we're, we're big on just, you know, even, even if I'm, you know, just chilling at the hotel at events, like I'll just watch other people, like on Lone Wolf, like in the free webcast, just seeing like, see what they do. And then just question like, okay, why would you do that? And just just question myself really and question why they Break would do that. Breaking yeah. down okay. breaking down game footage is huge. I mean, there's a reason why professional leagues dedicate huge amounts of time from their, you know, practice week to just looking at what we did during the game or what we did in practice. Cause you're able to see that third person perspective that like you were talking about with Casey, you know, like, hey, he's up in the tower, maybe he saw something that we didn't see. Well, now you're able as a player to see you playing and be like, oh, I thought I looked inside. I, f- I fucking did it. Okay, my bad. And then, you know, maybe you're able to pick out some of those mistakes that objectively in your head, you believe I didn't fucking do that, but the film doesn't lie. And it can help show that, oh, shit. Okay. Okay. My timing there was late. I need to get over on that earlier because he's already blown through that gap or, you know, it just helps you give so much I'm more, sorry. I think, context to that training. You know, it's, it's, you're able to kind of break down and, and, and analyze, you know, what actually time was spent on the field instead of just, okay, I spent time on the field now let's go home. You know, maybe we'll think about it, but you know, that that's about it or for, you know, close the chapter on that practice. Yeah. How often do you guys play paintball? Like on like an average, on an average week during the season, how often do you guys play during the week? Like, I assume you guys play during the week. So already... you guys night ball. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Uh, for yep. sure, do the night balls. The night balls on the weekends. Yep. Okay. Night balls on the weekends. So, how often is night ball? Is that like just Wednesday, like a one Wednesday, day? Wednesday, Thursday, and then the weekend. Oh, not Wednesday, Thursday. Wednesday, Friday. My apologies. Wednesday, Friday, and the weekends. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. And I, go fucking play night ball. Night ball is so much fun. That was one of my favorite experiences <laughs> of when I'm I went jealous, out to bro. fit. Because there's something about hopper ball under the lights with music going, just kind of that street ball HK, like old school. And just with the rec ball guys, 12 dudes, dudes are here. Yeah, no, like it's just, hey, whatever guys are here, we're making squads. That yeah. dude's in jeans. That's Colt LaCal. All right, same team. Let's run it. Like, you know, and it's, <laughs> it's crazy. That happens. Nightfall is a dude. blast. I wish we had something like that, dude. Seriously, I wish. But um, so I think you know a field owner. So how I do I do know a field owner, not anymore though, not well, anymore. Well, uh, all right. The, the local one, I'm pretty saying. sure they pretty sure they sold it. But um, so how long does night ball usually last? Like on like a, a normal Wednesday? Oh, uh, just uh, just two hours, seven just nine. Two hours. Yeah, seven, seven to nine. nine. Yeah. Holy shit! That's dark as shit. That's yeah, why so we have we lights. LED bright lights. Yeah, <laughs> dude. My God, dude. Are you, it, dude, it is pitch black at like five o'clock here. Well, uh, you're also see. thinking daylight savings too right now. It's... Oh, dude, you're tr- You're absolutely right. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. To be fair, okay. like during during the season, like we do get some pretty gnarly sunsets while we're playing. I've seen yeah. some of verbal some of clips, clips and it's sick. just sick. Yeah, it's they're beautiful out there. Gnarly. There's times where like I'm playing, I'm like, wow, and I get shot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is amazing. <laughs> All right, uh, Brando. What uh, what else was on your list, dog? Yeah, yeah. Um, I want to know who, who, or or what, like influences your guys' play style. Mm. Mm. I'll let you go first. If you nah, Jonathan, it. you're going first, dog. You've made him go first every other time. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm pulling the host card. All right, all right, all right. All right. Uh, honestly, I got you, Scott. <laughs> I don't really, I don't really like. I guess I just watch different. People, not certain people, but just like create my own play style, really. Like, I don't really like if you see me play, I don't really play the bunker. I try to play around it, if that makes sense. It sounds stupid. Let me know. I don't care. But um, <laughs> I just try to create my own because there's with how I play and what I like to do, there's not really somebody out there that, you know, that I can mimic. If that, if that makes sense. Yeah. And well, so, like, um... And I guess maybe, you know, maybe if it's not even necessarily someone you think you're matching, you know, like who was your influence when you got into the game? You know, like who was the dude uh, that you were like, oh shit, he plays really good. Like, you know, all right, let's watch that video. Like, you know, and then, 
now you're obviously you're growing into your own talent and starting to kind of shape how you want to play you know by yourself but yeah i mean was there a guy okay. back in the day or you know a, a team maybe even um i mean i really can't really can't say like okay. i'm really trying to remember but it's just like i'm trying to I mean, there's like, of course, that one person that like stood out when I first got into it because he was super flashy and that was, you know, Fedorov, yeah. you know, because okay. he was just all over like the HK stuff. But like, and then like seeing that and just, I guess, just seeing him be like, oh, being flashy or whatnot and just trying to like, you know, make his shots do it. I'm like, oh, I thought that was pretty cool. And, and I guess you can say him, but. You know, I, I think know. that's, I think that's funny you say Fetty because. You know, in some ways, I think you do match his kind of aggressive and, you know, very athletic focused mindset on, on game. Like, I mean, that, that, that is funny you say that because I, I think even without you realizing there are influences there, because, yeah, you know, I mean, some clips I've seen of you, it's, it's more aligned with that kind of wild getting down the field, but also very smart, knowing exactly what the fuck I'm doing, but I'm just going to do it at a high octane pace because I'm athletic and, you know, that's how I'm going to play this game. Shit, no, I think except, you got me. <laughs> we got the double, man. Uh, wait, is except it, the double knee sliding. I've never seen him double knee slide. Yeah, I, 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 that's, that's an American. Underrated, yeah. dude. Bro, underrated. So easy whenever it's on grass with the hydrogen knee pads. Oh, yeah, no just... problem. <laughs> dude. Dude. With the turf, that's where it gets a little bit. That's where it gets a little hard, you know, especially in the hot summertime. Sheesh. I can still do it every now and then, but usually I eat shit sometimes. <laughs> like I'll, I'll go, and the next day, you know, I'm like on the side, you know, rolling <laughs> over. But you know, initially it's there. But <laughs> all, all right. the NHL events have such good grass now, to where it's like, dude, you can hit the double knee yeah. slide at any event. I think that's the one thing they actually did great this year is they have like, decent grass. Like, like I was like, wow, okay. We're not playing on Farmville, like yeah. We didn't have the ago. dirt ball open, yeah. <laughs> or it's like I even remember a cup, like at that at that Florida venue, there being like just like random piles of like black sand and stuff like that. And I, I yeah. feel like I don't really see that that often anymore. Well, no. I will say at the end of a weekend, every field is always fucked. But that's what happens True. when you play four days of paintball on a field. It just you know the same lanes dudes are running in are gonna Getting become ran sand on and dirt. shot at. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Before we get too far away from it, uh, Scott, what was, you know, what was your answer? You know, what, I guess, what kind of were the influences that, you know, you maybe picked up on when you were starting to, you know, develop your skill and get into the game? Yeah, uh, the team that definitely influenced me the most was I was like, not actually playing, but learning about paintball and like starting to enjoy it and like go play locally at Capital Edge Paintball, actually. Um, no was, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh so yeah tested was my team like i watched them when they were on the espn against dynasty and stuff like loved that loved watching thomas and maddie and rich and all those guys that played nikki cuba neil everly Bacon, like so many people yeah neil everly like so many good he, everyone players. forgets his name everyone forgets neil's name we got to make sure yeah, yeah that's still mentioned there yeah. hell yeah no i mean and i and i still own that heroes for a day movie too like absolutely love those guys so that was a big part of it and i think at this point uh my goal every time i step on that field is to be as aggressive as i can while also like being smart about it like i used to be reckless aggressive in the past and you know over the years i've learned to be more patient and methodical about it and that's kind of my mindset all the time I'm like how far can i go and still do it in a good way okay that gap I'm, I'm as close as i can get to that gap okay let's let's figure out how to get through that oh i think it's open let's take the gap now like i want to get up the field as soon as i can i just i'm very methodical about it at this point i feel like yeah no that that's yeah. funny you mentioned the uh the northern california and the draw towards excessive because i mean i'm very similar way you know i I, I didn't fully know about the whole paintball thing until it was kind of dying down in like 2011 and 2012. But when I looked back, I was like, there was a team like in my city and they were fucking good and they won everywhere. Okay. And yeah, no, there was this instant attraction. Um, and yeah, well, you're saying I showed off. I have my sealed copy of Heroes for Day that sits on my desk. But uh, yeah, no, I, I definitely can relate to, uh, you know, to some of that. Nice. That's awesome. <clears throat> Damn, dude. It is so, it is so crazy just the concept of uh you know okay so we're kind of in a similar situation sorry going back to paintball um <laughs> okay <I just> uh 
it's crazy because in a way we're me and brando are in a kind of a similar situation that you guys were obviously like our pro team got relegated and uh, now it is a shell of what it once was right and to where we have to fill we have to fill the big shoes um so it's just really it's really refreshing seeing you guys do it because without a doubt it puts it puts uh like fire in my heart to where it's like you know it's it's doable you know like just because you get relegated does not mean you're done you know or that organization is done so i think that like seriously you guys made a serious achievement and you guys should wear your wear your chins proudly for sure (laughs) and i appreciate it you know that's the you were bringing up relegation there and i think it's it's actually one of the really cool things with paintball is no one's safe i agree fuck if dynasty goes out and gets 20th in every uh event next year is that gonna happen fuck no but if it does they get the you know they get the fucking get out of the league just like anyone else i mean it's it creates this atmosphere where you have to compete and you have to constantly be trying to level your game up because well, if you're not, I mean, we've seen it with the Iron Men. There's a chance that a legendary franchise could eventually, you know, shock. maybe just not have enough. Yeah. You know, like they've always kind of had yeah. enough to stay in, but it just takes one year where you don't, and then you're you're back down. So it it creates this beautiful kind of uh, pressure to always be better, to always have to you know level up your game, and that's something that you guys are going to have to instantly almost start fighting against, you know, coming in as the the rookie team. We've seen some great examples of rookie teams these past couple of years, but you know, all right, that, that clock starts, you know, you're, you know, yep. you're, you're kind of time in pro the second it starts, you know, your, your time to your ending is also starting and, and beginning, um, which is really interesting part of paintball, you know, what are your guys's kind of, all right, we're going up into that. What is the, you know, what is the mindset of, okay, we, we did good. Now the real fucking test begins, you know, the, the really, you know, hard, uh, uh, uphill climb is about to start. Uh, I mean, I think most of us have a pretty simple mindset about it. It's just get up and put in work again the next day. You know, I think all the guys, have been working already right and as long as we just stay on the path of continuing to put in the work right i don't think there's anything that needs to be different or surprising or or anything else about it every event we could have still lost every single match in semi-pro it's not like we got to go out there and they just gave us the wins like we still Mm -hmm. had to do it i feel like you know obviously it was a good year we had we won a lot of those matches 99 percent or whatever next year is going to be harder yeah but we can still win matches. And I think that's what everybody's mindset is. We're not going to go in there afraid, um, but we also know that these guys are gonna be better than what we've played. And and that's part of what we're excited about too, right? Is the challenge of being able to do that next step. Mm-hmm. Well said, I think, I think the thing that, you know, and I'm not gonna say it catches you guys off guards because you guys are actually probably are used to it. The thing that catches teams off guard when they come up is the speed of the game decisions Mm -hmm. are made in lightning seconds like you know yeah you may get the kill and then you have the time to move down the wire you know whatever it is when you're in d3 but if you do that in pro your window to do that is now three seconds instead of 20 seconds so it's like yeah you can make that move but you have to realize trust and make that move way before you know any division you know previously um so i guess you know speaking on that javi is you guys have, you know, kind of dealt with that speed and that, you know, oh shit, this happens really quick. Um, you know, mm-hmm. what, what I guess are your thoughts going from, you know, going into that? Um, I think we'll be ready, honestly. And like, I, like I re- reiterate what Scott said, like we all, you know, push each other, you know, to be better. And so leading to that into the next year, you know, especially during this off season, you know, I have no worries for us as a team, you know, literally immediately after, you know, winning cup, we we're like, all right, back to the grind. Like it was just simple as that. You know, it wasn't like, oh, let's go party, let's, you know, take a month, two month off break. Like, no, like, when we just, we have an. End I will ball say, y'all work, got pretty fucked it. up that night at cup. All right, I. Oh yeah, oh, <laughs> cup I was a liability at times. All right, Dude, so y'all definitely was... y'all had your oh. night. But yeah, yeah, is that what you're saying? <laughs> that, that, was, that was their night for like a couple <laughs> couple weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah, but, uh, deserved. But with us, like, that's just us. We have, for sure, like, an end goal. And, like, winning semi-pro was just that step. You know, now it's on to the next step. And with us, like, we're all, we're all in it. 
you know nobody's changing nothing's there's no like mindset of like oh like you stay like nah like we all mm. we're solid we're good it's not even a conversation you know, it's all right not even a conversation same time so next year right okay boys see you yeah <laughs> exactly same time next year and so like uh, just us as fit together as a team you know going to next year i think we're just going to be stronger than ever and you know i'm excited for it i'm excited for what pro is going to bring us and i'm ready for the challenges they're going to be hard challenges i do agree but um there's nothing that we can't accomplish for sure okay i'll be cheering for you guys for sure appreciate it hell yeah i hope a lot of i mean i know someone in particular who's going to be cheering for you guys the fucking menace will be out there uh, (laughs) roasting everyone so yeah (laughs) Dude, she was something. Dude, oh man, that was the the reaction that she got out of Virgil you fucking is just classless piece of shit. Yeah, yeah <laughs> that's uh, it's beautiful. It just beautiful. It honestly shocked me more. I was like, what? Like, I didn't think it would get that intense. Because like, <laughs> yeah, the, the jokes were funny. Yeah, like the cheers were intense. And I'm like, in my head, I'm like this is just like cheering, like. If you go to like a it's like playground NFL, drama like type it, stuff like it, it wasn't it, like it wasn't yelling. like fucking that. Jackson Fry isn't paying his child support like he wasn't saying shit like that <laughs> that's that's also completely a joke people don't take that as a statement but like he, she wasn't attacking fucking Perfect. like personal things she was just saying dumb chants she, and the fact that chance, that oh. got under his skin so much is whew. all right uh, the menace just, ladies and gentlemen she was a menace and like it's funny too because like i was like i'll go up to her because her name's chanel she's real sweet like outside of payment she's like the sweetest person you'll ever meet <laughs> like i was like it's kind of insane and then like she like after that like just a couple of chance like i'll after the match i'll just go up to her and like oh thank you and then she's like did i do good she's like I, I think i can make a couple more and like bro she has like an <laughs> iphone and like notes of just chance I'm like, what is happening? Like, it's it's insane. She 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 goes in. Yeah, she Dude, became uh, like Scott. That. You may know this as being North Cal guy. Do you remember Sign Lady from the Kings? I do. I do remember. Yeah, Sign there you together. go. So she's in the ESPN Hall of Fame, but it was this uh, fan of uh, the Kings who would show up to every single game with just a, a sign that just had a message on it. And she did this for like 30 years straight uh, and kind of became a part of like the Kings, you Damn. know, culture. Uh, so yeah, sign lady, shout out her. But yeah, so now we got a paintball version. Gotta love that. Oh, we do, 100%. <laughs> Dude, I love cheering. I love, I love that playful banter. I love, I love that. Yeah, you like shit talking. <laughs> what the fuck? Her, her rhymes, like, I don't know how she does it. She got she bars. Her skull or she, something. Got bars. She, she can rhyme, bro. She can, any single thing she says, Hard it rhymes. Like, How's this happening? <laughs> yeah. She's getting her snaps out here, bro. I was just about to do that. I was about to do that. The poetry slam. <laughs> dude. But, dude, one thing that I'm not even going to lie, I'm still upset about is i was like begging to play you guys like all year like no joke like yep. all year i was like, I was, like dude, was, when, we got, when we got bumped up to semi pro they were like they, i was like oh dude i want to play pb fit so fucking bad and now but sadly we suck too much to play you guys so shout out to you guys for being too good <laughs> <laughs> so now it's another it's another long period of time where i don't get to play you guys so yeah, go, so now you gotta go be pro. So fucking, God there you go, it. Hatch. There's your right, there you fire go. under your that's, butt. Yeah. Your fire now, now, now I just gotta try to win five in a row, dude. That's that's the that's there the bar. Go. The bar is five in a row. They, so. They're gonna have to add in a sixth event, and then yeah, you'll have to win that to now uh, step God that bar damn, up even more, dude. Yeah. The, the percentage of that is even lower than just five. Oh my god, dude. It's like hitting a six leg parlay versus hitting a two teamer. You know, it's yeah. it's getting hard yeah. up there. <laughs> Uh, but yeah still upset about that not gonna lie all but. right uh <laughs> mr brando do you have a do you have any yes, more for sir. them uh, let me see let me see sorry i um hmm let's see oh so i know scott said that kind of it's kind of set in it kind of hasn't really set in uh necessarily about the like the accomplishment of winning five in a row but also like winning the pro spot, you know, the, accomplishing the goal you you guys set out uh, for, um, like, or, or, or let, let's go with that, J- just that winning that pro spot, like, you guys winning your semifinal game, I think sealed the deal, 
your pro spot, correct? Mm -hmm. um, yes. Was like, can you speak on on the emotions of just that alone, and then, um, like recentering your guys's yourself if needed, uh, in order to to play the finals? I I already know the answer for one of those questions. <laughs> <laughs> Javier, uh, what you take? I, I, honestly, whenever, because like that kind of situation happened to us before, even though yes, it solidified us with the, the us winning semifinals, us going to pro, but with the whole situation of 2022 and us thinking making finals and like, oh, we're done. You know, I pretty much said f that. You know, once we won semifinals, I didn't even think about us you know, winning that pro spot. I just thought it was like, I want it all. Like, I want this, I want this fucking win, and especially against camp, you know? And in my mindset, I wasn't going to let, you know, camp go out on the win, especially if, you know, they stay in semi-pro, they get the momentum, you know? Mm -hmm. Even though we won't be playing against them, that's just how I am. Like, I, I want to finish on the win. Like, I'm a sore loser. I admit to that 100%. Like, I hate even losing points. I'm like, how could I have done that better? Like, I'm an idiot. I shouldn't have got shot. Like, I shouldn't get shot. But just with that, just with the whole, like, it didn't really affect me, uh, to be honest. It just honestly made me, if it did affect me, it made me want to play harder. Uh, and, and the finals, you know, it made me think about all the times that we, this is the times we sacrificed to play up to that moment, you know, that that was it, you know. Yeah, we solidified with third and fourth, but in my head, I think I wouldn't solidify it if I didn't win finals. You know, it's like, yeah, I could have got that pro spot, but at the same time, I lost in finals for that pro spot. Like, nah, I want, I want it all. Like, mm. I need it all. So, <laughs> but Hell that, yeah. that was, I think that, that speaks. I think that speaks to paintball as a whole because for years that's been the statement that you can win the series, you could win every event, but if you don't win cup. They can f you over hard. Yeah, so, Cup, cups the so. one that everyone wants to fucking win. So it's, you know, yeah. I, I, I was gonna say too. I mean, when you guys were getting in the huddle, getting ready for that finals game, uh, I, I don't think anyone there was done. You know, we we talked mm -hmm. about it, Scott, when you were on. Uh, you know, the not done yet. You know, kind of having that mantra. Mm -hmm. No one on that team was was ready to you know to quit like you know it wasn't like yeah we got pro all right let's go play another game see what happens no it was i well i still fucking hate blast camp like i'm, I'm gonna go beat them because i don't want to give them an inch where they can say online like oh but we won cup so you know and it's like no like we're we're ending this statement you know here that um that. and i mean yeah i mean scott i mean that's that's the energy i got from filming you guys what was the energy like in that huddle yeah 100 percent. that like there was Nobody even talked about having won the pro spot already. People would ask. I definitely wouldn't answer those questions at all. Like I had a bunch of family, yeah. not a bunch. I had some family there, uh, and they would try and they're like, "Hey, so you know, it was like end of Saturday. Like, hey, so if you win semis, what?" And I'm like, "I, I have no idea. We have to win cup. We <laughs> have to win cup. Yeah. Yep. All I can tell you, if we win cup, we win the pro spot. I can tell you that for sure." <laughs> Mathematically, that works out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, like I can tell you that's how the math works 100%. Like, so and I don't a... think there was anybody thinking anything else. I think everybody was on that same page. Like Chavi said, especially with what happened the year before, thinking we already had it. Um, I was even watching the, the coaches show earlier today. And even some of the people from FSU thought that we had already won it. You know, like, I guess the coaches had went up and kind of shook each other's hands and was like, congrats on the pro spot. And he was like, wait, what? I got the pro spot. I thought you guys got the pro spot. So like that yeah. was crazy to have that happen where this year is like no math. I don't I don't want to worry about the math. Like we talked about. <laughs> Fuck the math. Fuck no math. Yeah, Scott's a paintball yeah, player. No, He's no, like, I don't want to do math. I want no no carry in the two. Let's just fucking end this shit. <laughs> Hell no. Yeah. The most math I need is five for the five kids. <laughs> there we go. Five yeah. for five, baby. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> okay, well, so yeah. non paintball related, this is a serious question. Oh god, we're going to animals, aren't we? Yeah, we are. Fuck. All right. All right. So, what do you guys think is the is the biggest predator you guys think you guys could handle with your bare hands? Oh my god. We had a one v one debate about this last week. In a one in a one v one, 
What is the biggest predator you think you can handle? I think we ended up saying, I mean, like, I think my answer well, hold on, was. Hold on, let, let, let him answer. Let him answer. Let him answer. Well, here I'm we go. trying to think. Was it? What are, what are like the levels here? Yeah, like, what is the levels? Predator, we're talking predator. Uh, it could be like, a coyote. Could be a freaking lion. Could be a okay. uh, an eagle. Could be uh, a, killer a shark. Killer whale, a shark, shark. That's a, a predator, one. something that's going out to get prey. Almost any bird, like birds. I feel like I birds can take are fucked. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I respect. <laughs> yeah. Dude, what's that one? What's that blue one? Ah, oh, so it's a it's a blue bird that's like super fucking dangerous. Thing will peck your fucking eyes out. Brando, Google it. Big bird, big blue bird. Blue bird. <laughs> Got you. Okay, yeah, it's <laughs> blue bird. It's a, um, dude, yeah, dude, it's, it's like a legitimate <laughs> thing that kills people. All right. Well, about okay. The bird from up that dodo bird. Yeah, I was, oh, that's what I thought. I thought he was talking like about uh, Kevin like kind of or like whatever. That one. <laughs> Maybe it's inspired off that one. But dude, it is huge. I think uh, a bear would be too hard to handle. I for sure, bear would be. Way We've said hard. grizzly bear is a whole team effort. That's another question we could that's ask yeah, later. Yeah. yeah. Do you guys? Ooh. Okay. Okay. I got another question after that one. Here we go. Oh, Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> What's it called, Brandon? What's that bird called? It. it I got uh, a double walted. Uh, I, a I need a Double picture of it. God, Brandon, picture. you yeah, suck picture at pronouncing words, bro. I got you. I got you. Yep, yep, yep. Um, but yeah, okay. So, it, it, birds oh, here. That looks it, terrifying. Oh shit! That's he like Googled it. Right I was dude. waiting for that's the like picture. I was like, "Is it gonna come through?" Um, Where, where's it at, Brando? We need it right here. I, I just Googled it. Oh shit! That is the one. Oh yeah. No, I see what you're saying. That is a raptor. That is a raptor. That still exists. That's a modern day raptor. So I think the biggest bear I could possibly handle is maybe a sun bear, the smallest of the bear family. Maybe. But those I don't know if I can a bear. Oh my God, the second photo is a bear. crazy. I don't think so. You know what? I'm going to give myself, you know, I, I can fuck up a coyote. I, you know, I agree. Bears. That's where I was at. I was at coyote. I, I can fuck up a coyote. Yeah. You know, he might get a bite or two on me, but at the end, I'm going to get his ass. It's like the second he gets the bite on me, he's fucked. That. you know like as soon as he gets me, I'm like oh you shouldn't have lash bro like yeah, that's exactly that's when you give him a goddamn india like a, a neck indian burn bro nick indian just slammed right there yeah <laughs> yeah okay so all right scott what do you think what do, what, what do you think you can handle I, birds are easy coyote? apparently uh, yeah i mean <laughs> bigger than a coyote would be tough you know i don't know if i could go bigger i agree a anything bigger than a coyote is kind of like that's where it, it gets a little too close to 50 to, 50 for me well it gets to the point too where their neck becomes so muscular and guarded that, by like yeah. fat that it's like ha i have bare hands i don't have like claws to stab you i, I need to no, be I'm able to get hands. leverage on yeah. something or yeah, <laughs> yeah so yeah coyote yeah. for sure if there's bare hands coyote for sure okay okay we were thinking, right. I think, I think I said maybe like a bobcat, you know, like maybe, okay. but the problem is, is See, I was thinking they just get vicious, over. dog. Like they're, 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 they're crazy. Bro. Yeah. So yeah. Don't be near a tree. Hold on. Where's the last game? Hold on. This is another question. <laughs> this is a important <laughs> question. Yeah. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. All right. Well, all right so here, uh, set up the, a, 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 an empty Chipotle, an, an empty Chipotle, like that, like size. Like I'm going to run to the table. I'm going to fucking hit it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Any fish? Okay. Empty fucking Chipotle. Bro, but a mountain lion like, in a Chipotle, I feel like he's gonna jump on the tables, get on the soda machine, be like, got the high ground now. Like, I think he's, he's gonna, gonna play with his food, bro. A, a, a mountain lion? I think he's playing with me, dude. He's, he's gonna be playing with me. Coyote doesn't know what to do. He's gonna see all the chairs. And yeah, like, oh, you're exactly. That's, at that point, I'm advancing on him. That. I'm like, I'm gonna just, you know, like grab a chair and just, like, <laughs> Okay, so with this exact same with this exact same setting. Yeah, I was gonna say, okay, set up this next one, because I think include, this one's really good for fit. Include your whole team. Oh, definitely a bear. Do you guys? Do you guys think your entire team could take out a full, like a fully matured chimp? Ooh, hey, you changed up the ooh, animal this week. Okay, go. Oh, yeah. for context, last week he asked us if DMG could take down a grizzly bear. Uh, so that's where I thought he was going. But full grown chimp. That's ooh, that's a hard I, question. I, I think I'm gonna so. drop a picture of, exi of the exact one. Okay. Okay, the exact one. <laughs> the exact one. That, that makes that makes a difference too. He's Without got the teenage doubt, mutant ninja chimp. Nah, where's this pic? Here it is. This picture's fucking famous as shit. Here we go. Also, great, great bump job, Brandon. Oh, Love I, the bump if image. If I think I know what it is, it's probably this muscular ass chimp. Yeah, it is. Oh, yeah, Jesus it is, Christ. dude. I'm gonna look have to that add thing. that. Holy fuck! Honestly, it's for us to win, I'll sacrifice myself for the betterment of the team. And let Brody, Johnny, 
and Trenton definitely manhandled that thing. That's what I'm saying, no. dude. Like, first things first, I, you got to let Brody try and get it himself. He's crazy. Yeah, bro, Brody is Brody's crazy. Brody's going to be like, respect the 1v1. Respect the 1v1. Yeah, let, let, let me get let in there. Let him try and then respect then the 1v1. And then, and then it'll be a battle. battle. <laughs> no, that He's man. like, you just can have the scraps. You know? Dude, he... <laughs> You want to talk brute force? That's that's the brute of the family. It's okay. insane. It's so kinda... you guys, so you, you think you, all you guys could handle a chimp like a fully grown, muscular, fucking naked chimp? Yeah, I think okay, we can. Why do you have to be naked? I was gonna say there's a lot of that's adjectives picture, you put there. The picture, the picture's naked. naked. I'm like, oh, if it doesn't have fur, it's naked. It's like if a dog doesn't have a collar, the thing's naked. God okay. Damn. All right, all right, all right. I kind of okay. see your logic, but okay. Um, so I, I, I think we could, yes. I think so. And, and, and people are losing fingers for sure. 100% might lose shot. Might need a fit, might need another D1 player next year, but for sure yeah. that chip's you, going down. You know what's hilarious is we fucking, our answer to this was to sacrifice both of our attackers too. Logan and Caden, y'all are getting <laughs> fucked. You know, sorry yeah, guys. Yeah, yeah. You got to buy us time. He's going to be eating you guys while we're going to go at the bear. So yeah. Right, do you think you guys, okay, do you think you guys can handle the bear? Step up from the chimp. All the grizzly bear? I, I, I think so. Bear. I think if I like, I had, like when I cut in the field, if I just cut like the bear, I think I'd juke him. And Bear's then my faster than you, homie. Bear's faster oh, than you. Fuck. Climbs you faster than you. It runs Chipotle, faster than you. It's stronger than you. Grizzly bears up. aren't no joke, bro. I will say they're yeah, they're sure. a badass Dude, predator. Do we get like, our hands? Do we get anything? You get ants. You know, oh, no, for the grizzly bear, said... for the grizzly bear, you guys get a five inch fixed blade for, for the entire team. Five inch fixed blade. Nothing too crazy. But a little something. But you could at least get through its skin. So that's the thought. Yep. Is like, all right, if you okay. get the right I, spot, you could potentially take it out. I I think yes, because you just got to launch me. Just throw me on top of him, and like while I'm just struggling with them, getting thrown around, that's when fit comes in. That's yeah. You sacrifice yourself for the eyes. You sacrifice yourself for the exactly eyes. That's for the eyes. That's exactly what I was going for. The eyes. I'm saying we just we would just get our snake eyes, honey butter them up, and just <laughs> and just you know sacrifice for the greater good. So I, that's the way. Uh, that is definitely the way. You got to send the attackers first, do some of that, that damage, you know, especially with the eyes, you know, get maybe even yeah. get some tendons, how you can't move, and then that's oh, where you yeah. start going. Cut its Achilles tendon. It'd be fucked, Cut right? Yeah. Oh, there you go. oh, shit, dude. That is no joke part the most much Achilles, like, oh, Achilles God tendon damn. ever, dude. <laughs> dude, that's, that's how we get it. Just slime me, that, slime me with butter underneath. I slide, I slide. Oh, <laughs> oh, dude, that is amazing. <laughs> Team the fucking me. double O Chavez over here <laughs> fucking the bear up. Dude, you guys that. gotta let me know what they say. You guys gotta let me know, like, like, when you guys ask the rest of the team, you guys gotta let me know what they say. Oh, All right. Oh, yeah, put Johnny this in your group chat, in for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. I'm texting right now. <laughs> oh, fuck yeah. A um, fully grown grizzly. Okay, y'all think we could win. <laughs> Can win. And then just tell him to listen to the show for the context. But I will bring up our other hypothetical question we wanted to ask both of you guys tonight. Um, this question was actually brought to us by Lastro Lopez. Are do either of you guys uh, know uh, Scott out there in uh, in Texas? I think he plays like with the Austin Oni line and stuff like that. Uh, I think they play at Outlaw Paintball, I think is the spot that's closer to them. Austin Oni? Yeah, it should be Outlaw. Okay. Um, but yeah, so he threw us in this question last week and we thought it was a banger, so we wanted to get your guys' opinion on it too. You have to come up with a D5 paintball line. It could be the best competitive line. It could be the funniest line. But you're not using paintball players. You're using anyone. And when I mean anyone, I mean anyone. My line last week was Napoleon, Alexander the Great, Shrek, Tom Cruise, uh, I had one more that I can't think of right now, and then my pod runner was Anne Frank. You have to include the pod runner. You really have to include the pod runner. So, right, Brandon, what, was your, need... what, was your, what was your five in the pod, pod runner? Just so, just to give them context. Yeah. Dude, yeah. Uh, fuck. Who the fuck? I can't even read my handwriting. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, I had uh, uh, Michael Jordan, of course, you know. Uh, I had Kevin Hart and The Rock for the dynamic duo. Uh, I had Tazon Day, that chocolate rain guy, because of his voice, you know, would resonate calls. on the field. Yeah, absolutely. And wow. then, uh, of course, I ran it out with uh, Hitler because who else is going to give amazing speeches that you rally behind? So, oh, very true. <laughs> so, very true. <laughs> so, boys, who who's on your starting five plus pod runner? Non paintball players, D five. You know, I was actually kind of thinking of it because because I'm a very I like watching funny movies and. Um, 
Adam Sandler and his crew. There you oh, go. Oh, shit. The, like the okay. grownups? Okay. Like the grownups. Yeah. Like them, those okay, five. Okay, gotcha. Damn. Like, definitely those five. And then the chemistry, they're winning. The the pod runner. It's our one. That's it. But so sort to of recap, that's Kevin Hart. Uh, no, Kevin David, James. Kevin, Kevin James, James. Sorry, Kevin James. Kevin James uh, David Spade, Chris David Rock, Spade, Adam, Adam Sandler, and uh, the Rob I, Schneider. Rob Schneider. Yep. Okay, so <laughs> I want to hear then where, where are you placing all those boys on the field? Because we we went ahead and we gave you know D one, D two, three, and then the snakes out as well. Where would uh whose whose strengths do you think uh, are going to help you out in which positions? It has to be the three. I think he's like the guy that brings it all together, especially with Agreed. him like bringing his homies in for the movies. I think he for has sure. to be like He'll be back the there, yeah, that, the in boys. like shorts and a oversized shirt. You know, <laughs> looking he's looking like he's from the two thousand still. I and I think Davis Spade, the one on the D side. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um. Uh. Who's following him up? Uh, what's oh, I can't oh, I can't remember this his name, uh, Kev, Kevin Spacey or yeah no uh, what's his <laughs> Kevin name? Spacey uh, oh Kevin god James, all right James, Kevin James, <laughs> Kevin, James, my <laughs> names are all I was no, waiting you're for good, Kevin you're James good. coming I was like dude there's no way he puts him Kevin James is the snake guy bro there's no, <laughs> no way you can't you can't <laughs> yeah <laughs> no He'll be so Dorito side sure. two okay Dorito side two for sure and then um who's who's the fifth one Chris Adam uh, and Chris, and Chris, David Spade yeah, Chris and. Or Chris Rock Rob and David, Schneider. or Rob Snyder and, and Chris Rock. Sorry, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so Rob Snyder as the one in the snake, and then Chris he Rock as the two, two in the snake. And I feel small. like he has like that crazy hair, and so I just feel like he'll get crazy in the snake. You know what yeah, I mean? Damn. Yeah, very <laughs> yeah. true. Very true. Uh, so I, I, that's my yeah. five. The pod runner, man. I don't know. That's a tough one. I got. You got to give me a second on that one. All right. Um, well, while you're thinking about that, Scott, what's your lineup, dog? Who's uh, who's on the starting five for the Welt Squad next year? <laughs> I think uh, I think the three definitely. I'd have to go out and grab Tom Brady. You know, for some. Oh, of the shit, oh okay. Dude. All right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's going on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, just low budget. Low budget. Low you know, budget. Yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. Hold on, real quick before he continues. I got my co- uh, my pod runner, okay. Ryan Reynolds. Nice. Dude, I like it. Deadpool out there. That's a great one. All right. Yes. He's cracking think, jokes I in think, the pits. He is cracking jokes in the pits. Yeah, I think he'll be cracking jokes and bringing pods, and I think it'll be a good time. All right. So <laughs> Scott's got Tom Brady at the three. Who uh who are we filling in with? Uh I was thinking like Devo for the for the one on the snake side from Jackass. Jackass? Dude. Yeah. Great pick. That guy, yeah. I, I guarantee that guy's cheating like a motherfucker. That guy's never getting called out. <laughs> I, I put him in the snake so he can get, you know, all slimy. Yep. About it. Uh, got, dude. Right, he'll be dirty real fast. He's going to be a know. no flinch master. The amount of times he's gotten hit with <laughs> shit that hurts way more than paintballs. Like, yeah. A hundred percent. He's getting away with a lot. Um, I'm trying to think who I want behind him. I wasn't sure. Still trying to think of that right now. I think on the other side, I want someone like quick and small, something like Spud Webb, maybe, you know, from way okay. back in the day. Yeah. Basketball, little okay. man, like, no, five, like that. five, three, five, four, something like that. Something like that. I don't remember right. how tall he was. He's dumb, though. Yeah. He had Damn. hops. Boy, boy had legs. Right. Five, so six. I'm figuring he could dive over the gap, so he'll be the one Dorito side over there mm. doing his thing. Uh, I think behind him, who was I going to do right behind him? Mm. I need, I got I to gotta get a couple good twos, right? Uh, maybe yeah. like Allen Iverson on the snake side is the two over there, right? He's okay. A little older now, so okay, the point guard. It. All right. Yeah, setting yeah, shit up. Yeah, I see it. Bad, okay. Bad. Right? He's got to have good eyes out there, so I like that. And then let's see, who else? Um, is he going to step over anyone? John Wick. On the two, on the holy three. fuck! John Wick's yeah, a good that's ass. That's a good pick. one. <laughs> but the problem shit, is, dude. we're not using Milsim shit. He's gonna be a little chopped up by the marker. He'll learn quick, but he'll be like, "We'll learn the, after." What you don't fuck? think we could get him a sidearm like Tyler? He's, like like yeah. 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 <laughs> he's at the, the fifty. Just... <laughs> yeah, he's, he's out there playing mag, mag fed only. That's it. Yeah, mag fed only. Yeah. Twelve. 
with 12. Yeah. Man. He's still playing he like stock class from back in the day. Yeah. Like single the <laughs> yeah. 10 tube uh, CCIs and stuff like that. Dude. <laughs> that's a, John yes. is a great pick, dude. Yes. I like oh, man, we got the all-star roster. Hello. Shit. John Wick <laughs> and Tom Brady. Holy shit, dude. God damn. No big deal. No big deal. That is yeah. a five-star team. Oh, God yeah, damn. I think, that, I think that's the five. Okay. Good I think, five. yeah. I think both of those answers definitely runner? uh definitely are up there. Okay. Yeah. We need a pod uh, runner still. So. Pod runner. Pod runner. Who do I need as the pod runner here? I want someone that means business. Why don't we do like uh Paul Blart Mall Cop? That's oh, what I want. Shit. Oh. Kevin James. Another okay. Kevin yeah. James. Yeah, I want Let's I want go. actual Paul Blart. Yeah, though, right? no, I, I got you. Yeah, specifically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, Paul Blart on the thing. Everything. I want him to and everything. So it looks like he's got a gun. I want. I want that. He's like, <laughs> I take with pods. Those were ours. Okay. Those were ours. Oh, no pods are getting past him. That is a good <laughs> dude. All right, I got. I got Colt's answer about the whole the monkey. Oh the, shit! The, the, okay. Yeah. So at first, at first he said, he said, "Dude, no." I'm like, how dare you not have faith? Then, <laughs> <laughs> he didn't believe. So uh, he's like, okay, you're right. And then he's like, J Money would distract. Uh, Trent would then sneak up and try to tame it by making it fall in love with him. And then we'll, we'll feel the rest of the safe to attack him. That, that's his okay, strategy. Okay. Okay. That's a good one. <laughs> so just, <laughs> J Money's fucked. Yeah, he's just getting eaten. Terrible. And then Trent's like, it's okay. It's okay, little bear. It's a, yeah, for you're gonna be okay. It's, and then all of a sudden, just out of the shadows, yeah, you guys yeah. are just <laughs> we're just coming. He's the kind of guy where he's like calling the bear down. He's like, "All right, only dreams now." And then the entire team comes in. <laughs> only and dreams goes now. Exactly. He's like, Go "It's night, gonna night, be a now. better it's place. Just... It'll be okay." Yep. Yep. You'll never be hungry. Yep. You'll never be hungry. Damn. All right. All right. At Shit. least he at least he finally trusts in the system. Do you know? I think oh, uh, I think every paintball team needs to ask themselves this: like, can you and your boys handle a chimp or a grizzly bear? Like, if I you can't so. handle it, if you can't handle a grizzly bear, settle for the chimp. And realistically, oh, yeah. if you can't beat either of those, I mean, how do you expect to beat the other D four paintball team? I mean, you know, <laughs> that's all I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. No, this Dude, is a hundred percent a realistic question you need point. to answer yourself. Cause dude, if the boy, what happens if the boys go camping in the in the bad part of the woods? You know, dude. all of us. There's be no team. There's, there's, exactly. <laughs> at that time, there is no I in team. It is it is collective. <laughs> I don't all know right. where we find a chimp. Be like, dude, uh, what? We're all going to the zoo, and one gets out. Yeah, I was gonna say, know? yeah, we're just gonna pull a Harambe, <laughs> just go <laughs> fight this fucker on his turf. Yep. Yep. <laughs> No Chipotle, home, home field advantage. Home field home advantage, field. he's oh, swinging man. around on oh. shit. Oh, Holy yeah. Shit, dude. He's just saying, y'all are cool. Obviously, my happy advantage yeah. in the Chipotle, dude. He's like, y'all came to schools. my hood to do this shit? Yeah, yeah dude. People, <laughs> I mean, we're going to be... Are you gonna be bad enough? He's gonna be one of the ones that signed too. He's just fucking swinging. Oh, and to us. dude! <laughs> holy shit! Looks like it's he's like throwing up gang signs, now. but he's just shit yeah. talking to you the whole time. Holy <laughs> shit, dude! Dude, that's when you know he's like, guys, we uh, we fucked up. I think we lost. <laughs> yeah, you're just standing there <laughs> like one. shit. The wrong one. Damn, where you, like you get like that that one ape where it's like Caesar from Planet of the Apes, you know? Dude, that it's, you get it's the like one, the he one pulls chip. the AK out. You're like, oh yeah. shit, where did we go wrong, guys? <laughs> Thought this was a normal chimp. Like, we all have our knives. Like, wait on, what's going on? Oh, wait, yeah. hold up, <laughs> but well, for sure, damn. Doc. All right, I'm glad Colt finally finally agrees. All right, Hatch, he, he agrees. Uh, did you have any other questions for the boys? I think Brandon may have did, may have had one or two, but uh. I think, uh, yeah, he got pulled out. Uh, the ex-girlfriend all right, all right. called him out. So, <laughs> now that you guys are on a semi-pro, you guys got to give me a little bit. Of, you guys got to give me a little bit here. What was the semi-pro team that bothered you guys the most? Like, who was, like, the biggest cheater that you guys would play against? They were like, man, these motherfuckers cheat like crazy. Mm. I think Arsenal. Arsenal? <laughs> okay. Dude, I, I just, I like, I just, for me, like, damn it. There must have been some memorable times where you got, you got them good and they kind of, you know, dude, geez, they just would not yeah. die. Gotcha. <laughs> Them and a uh, little bit of mo- newbies, but like, uh, I mean, there wasn't many too many instances where like, damn, like I really have to like really shoot this guy to, or shoot this team up to get him out. Like it's, mm. it was, I think, pretty fair. Besides, really, them two. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. So Arsenal and uh, newbies. So those are you. What about you, Scott? What do you think? Um, you know, I don't really think of anybody in that way but if like 
in general, I remember when we went back to semi pro and we were just playing those events or playing those first couple matches or first couple events. I remember realizing everybody's going to play at least two more seconds. Like if I wrap around the bunker and you're yeah. sitting in like the home and you have no idea that right, you're doing this and I hit you from over here, all of them are going to go, oh, woo, and then try yeah. to come out of it, like, and leave after that. So I was like, okay, like that's a different thing that I haven't seen before. And like I said, I just didn't get a lot of time in pro, so I'm sure that was happening there too. But that was like, you know, you really get someone you're like, oh man, he had no idea. And he still turns and shoots five balls. You're like, this like, man, yo, get him face. out, get him out. <laughs> yeah. In his face exactly. right now. And he's shooting at me. I just want you to know that. And there's like, <laughs> ah, he just, he just found out of no, no, no. <laughs> that's not how they Hit this motherfucker 15 seconds ago. He knows it. Yeah. I know it. We all know it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nah, what the ref's got to pull him, dude. Because if I, if I punish him anymore, then I get a penalty, bro. You know, the ref's got to yeah. do their goddamn job sometimes. A hundred percent. Oh man, sure. sometimes they will let them squeeze a couple out. Like they will let them. And they'll be like, oh, trade. Yeah, yeah. And the oh, trade God, window is definitely bigger in like semi pro, whereas like you know. <laughs> It's certain big, certain games you could trade where it's like, all right, you know, you got that point two five to squeeze that, you know, ball off or, you know, see if you can get it done. Some games it was like, all right, so you get a full on spin rope, uh, five balls out. And if one of those hit, it's a trade. And it's like, wait, what? Yeah. No, Dude, oh, there were some times where I had, to, I had to fight some shit. I'm like, yo, like that was not a trade. <laughs> like, dude, I agree, dude. There are some where it's like, how the fuck are they calling that a trade? Like where you, just, you will just get the guy not even looking at you. And he'll still, and they'll still call it a trade because he just like squeezes one off on a good well, old, and it's that good feeling, old turn. Because everyone knows when you're running someone down, when all you see is fucking side rib and pack because they're just committed the other way, that's never a trade. That should never be that. a trade. You know, like <laughs> yeah. I should be able to put three in your ribs and you should not be able to react and, you know, turn around on me. But, you know, sometimes it happens. Yeah. <laughs> it's refing paintball. Oh, yeah. <laughs> It's pretty fucking hard. Yeah. I will say that it's it, like almost no, impossible is. sometimes. Like, yeah, I mean, there, there are some of Verb's clips from uh, World Cup have kind of showed that yeah. it's like, what were you gonna see the the paint that was in the air for you know a, a fraction of a millisecond? And, and it's also you know if it's too close, the ref doesn't want to decide the game on that. Yeah, you know, I guess that's the, valid too. It's that, like, the, was that really him? That I it's can't like, find anything was that on out him. The bunker, right? I don't see anything, right? If I call this guy out, he's gonna be like, dude, where am I head at? And fucking look all do the, over yeah, himself the, and see nothing. I also so, love the body language of that. Everyone knows that look of like you just keep looking at your gun and like, what? Where am I hit? <laughs> relatable. I have my fair share of those. <laughs> yeah, definitely relatable, dude. I'm like, yo, dude, what are you talking about? But it's also, you know, just a fat ass. Bitch. <laughs> <laughs> there's also those times too where it's like yeah, right it's on like the that, hopper, oh, and they're just right. like, I don't. What are you talking about? <laughs> where? And I, oh, I got gotcha. you. Oh. It's like, oh, great call, rap. Great call. Good great call. On my beat. Dude, on me. On me. You're like, you're, you're yeah. good. Oh, you're good. Yeah. <laughs> It's like you know what? Thank you for not giving me a penalty from from my ignorance of not of not knowing I was hit. Thank dude, you. That, that I immediately like start my bad or just get away. But oh man, dude, semi pro that is that for at least for us, obviously with a big jump, uh, it is so different, and that's a huge thing that you will see like uh, when people squeezing a couple extra off. And another thing is one thing that I noticed like from D three to semi pro is like dude, when you're in the snake and it's like a wire battle, dude. It's not really like you see people like blowing down the snake unless everybody's dead on that side. Usually it's like you take one bump at a time, one bump at a time. And then it's like you're slowly working your way down the snake. But usually I feel like in divisionals, that's where you see way more of like those dynamic players kind of like just crawling all the way down and getting like fucking five packs. Well, mm -hmm. it's uh, I think it, it, it goes back to because, you know, the guys you're playing against are going to check that move off more. You know, let's say yep. it's a ladder snake and people know that, OK, it's important that we hold the wire. So, you know, all of a sudden we don't have a dude who's, you know, shooting our sides up at the end of the stake. You know, when you're playing D4, that job's probably held not as well as when you're, you know, playing semi pro. And now, you know, yeah, if you try to take two knuckles at a time, the corner's going to snap you out just because. He's kind of checking that off every couple seconds. Yeah, uh, especially it's like there'll be like, yo, zib zob zoobity bob, he's in the snake. And then they set like a trap or something and have like another guy switch or <laughs> just stuff like that. Well, for sure. And I, I was going to say a, a good player reference to point this out with and someone I saw it a lot with is uh, George McLean. Back in the day with DMG when he was on uh, Pro With Them, he would try to just take these huge ass bites because he was a fast athletic dude. 
and would just get picked off because you know when you're against good gunfighters they're going to hit you on the slide when you're going out um and i think one of the things that he's learned with nyx is to bring that in and to okay i have the next bump take that okay i have the next bump take that and not i need to be in the 50 right now and of course everything's game dependent yeah maybe there's a time your side gets blown out and shit okay it's fucking hard whatever our call for you know this is hides clear i need to get down the field and apply pressure to help out the snake side or the other side mm-hmm. or flip this or flip the field you know sometimes right just like uh every layout's a little bit different every yeah, and, and, different. and you're just pointing out right now yeah it's so hard to be like the you know this is a the end all be all way we have to play shit because it's it changes every freaking layout. Right. It it's ends not, like, up it's not like, like a football. It's not like the the Super Bowl is having a different layout. You know, it's like yeah, the Super the Bowl is move. only fifty yards long. We're actually playing seven on sevens, and uh, good luck to everyone. Like it, that doesn't just happen out of nowhere. Like <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, what was I gonna say? It was it's like um, the same move will not work on a different layout. Like I mean, obviously, but it could like also. Like that's well, yeah, the thing. Like somewhere, like, just... You're running down the sidelines. You can do that shit on any layout. You know what I'm saying? But like the real, like the good, like the good, good shit where you see people like running through and like just fucking piecing people up, switching hands. You know, Does that make yeah. sense for sure. Yeah. Also, I think the the other thing that you know gets hard too with when you're stepping up into the higher divisions, you know, guys start to throw elements like bounce shots and shit more at you. So it's like for sure, I'm in my bunker. I'm safe. No, you're not. <laughs> and you know, like starting to learn how to play around that, where it's like okay i can be in this bunker but i only get to play like this small area of it because that pin there is making my life a a, you know hell on this layout it's like if i play it if i play the bunker fully i'm going to get destroyed by a bounce shot sometimes you know Mm -hmm. where it's like you really have to kind of just get there and hide and just be like just the the thorn in the side yeah Yeah, just be be the body over there yep i mean we're so much more honest question like you know with you guys spending that little time in the pro league like how do you start to kind of break down and play against those next levels of paintball if that makes sense you know adding in the you know the the quick speed like i was saying but also you know the the breaking down bounce shots and you know just that that next level of breaking down a layout that you know i think you guys have talked about that is your strength but yeah i guess you know what what's kind of the thought going into doing that on the you know the higher level next year for sake of a of a better term to me, I think the difference is going to be even more teamwork, more communication, more being patient or being aggressive when the situation calls for it. You know, everyone's going to have to up their awareness and their communication. I think those are the things that are going to make the difference, right? I feel like we're already doing a lot of the right things, but when you're trying to take that next step, you don't want to change everything. I think you just want to fine tune what you're already doing. And those are the things I think that are going to be the biggest differences is you're not going to be able to win like a one-on-one gunfight nearly as often. Maybe you can sometimes, but you know, like we have a lot of guys that are really good with their gun in general. So maybe we're winning a lot more of these gunfights than we will in pro. So you're going to need to be willing to let that go and tell your teammate to hop on it. You know, like I think those are the changes and just being aware, like where's the other team at who was on the box, you know, like where did that guy line up? You just saw that, you know, it was Ryan Greenspan that's running off the field. Where was he? What's he been playing? Like that awareness of the game on top of what we're already doing, I think will be the difference makers. Yeah. I, I mean, agree. throwing, you know, like, and I yep. think that you <laughs> called out a great, uh, uh, a great kind of evolution of information. Uh, you know, most lower divisional teams kill one. We got to kill. Great. That's good info. That is good info to know. Okay. There's only four guns against our five now. But the next level of that is, okay, kill one off the left. All right, now we know, you know, their D side's a little bit weaker. The even next progression of that is, we killed Ryan, he holds the cross shot, we got to move on that. And yeah, you don't have to say that, but when you're saying, oh shit, uh, you know, fucking, we shot out Archie and Ryan, we know their snake side's probably dead because that's where they've been playing this event. Now everyone on the team can put together a little better the picture of what's going on. Yep, I agree. That definitely it, it's all levels because level. because you know paintball yeah. paintball really is a very simple game it's just there's just very these these kind of steps these <laughs> like stairs of you know the the intricacies and the details that make it more complex and harder to play at a top level and you and you, I agree you play, you play against less and less people the higher you go 
to where, mm-hmm. you know, you like a lot of the times you're not going to be playing against the same people in D4. Like you, I feel like you, you can go an entire season. With, I mean, look, I mean, look what we did with fit. Like we went an entire season without playing them. Like that even probably happens even more in like the lower divisions where uh, you won't even be at the, it's just the more same. competition. You know, there's more exactly, teams who right. are showing there's up. There's way more teams. Yeah, that's what way I meant more to say. Teams. There we go. Perfect. And uh, you know, I once you start getting up into the the higher levels where you, you know you're playing less and less people, you do get to start playing like noticing what team has what players and like their tendencies, mm-hmm. like what they like to do. You know, like obviously you'll see like, oh, this is their snake guy, their super small guy. That guy obviously, you know, is going to be their attacker. You know. Oh, his name's Archie Barn Jr. He gets the fifty every fucking point, no matter what. He's crazy. <laughs> yeah it's my boy dude <laughs> shout out abj um yeah no i paypal's crazy this this game is absolutely insane um the fact you guys were able to do what you did this year is just is just a testament to dedication really it's it's a testament to working hard um you know like you were saying chavez you're just sacrificing things like shit i wanted to go to that family event but we have a practice and you know i that means not more to me but that <laughs> means a lot to me and i want to go be there yeah. you know with the boys that so no no like and i feel like with that like that mem this memory of us you know winning the whole series you know five or five you know is gonna solidify with me you know until i'm old as hell old as shit you know i just feel like that'll be one of those memories i can actually flash back to whenever i do lose my memory i can be like oh shit there it is (laughs) but (laughs) one day yeah one day 80 year old chavez is like kids back when i was your age i was winning national paintball championships Like, like, take it easy, we don't go outside like, anymore grandpa paintball? shut up they play, like fucking laser tag and like like laser tag <laughs> and, like, in the house face and shit like, yeah. <laughs> like what is like, go back go back to your pod grandpa <laughs> <laughs> but no but that that for sure oh yeah uh i mean scott i guess you know what you know obviously you know like everyone else on the team you probably had stuff you had to sacrifice stuff you had to put off i mean I guess for you, is there that same kind of, that's what I can hang my hat on at least of like those sacrifices were worth it at least, you know, like, you know, we, we did give up maybe some of the things I wanted to do, but the end goal that, that overall vision was accomplished. Yeah. Oh, a hundred percent. I mean, I've kind of moved my whole life for paintball. Like I'm here in Texas just for paintball. Like I wouldn't be here for any other reason. Not that I actually haven't enjoyed myself and met lots of amazing people too, but there was no reason for me to come. That was never like a thought process for me growing up or even as I got older of like, let's go to Texas. Yeah, there wasn't a um, job waiting for you or something. It was paintballs exactly. waiting for me. Yep. Yeah. So, I mean, this whole experience since moving out here has been surreal for me and it, it's definitely been worth it. You know, all the sacrifices of moving where I have and doing the the job and everything else that I'm doing uh, has definitely, definitely been worth it. Um, but I feel like it's not over yet either, right? Like there's going to be more sacrifice and I'm looking forward to the next steps. So just staying focused on that for sure. Okay. Um, I guess another follow-up question on that, cause you were, you know, kind of mentioning it, um, but you, you know, you do have kind of a business that's, that's in the game and, you know, trying to be around the sport of paintball. Um, you know, I, this was one of Hatch's questions, so I want to give him credit, but I just thought it was a great, you know, great time to bring it up. Uh, what is kind of the hardest part of owning a brand in paintball and, you know, uh, you know, like, h- how would you say, you know, what are the difficulties, I guess, with, you know, operating and running welts while also being a player? Yeah, uh, I say the biggest thing that I've had issues with now as we're kind of growing a bit more is being able to keep track of everything, right? I'm often not at my house and sitting in front of my computer when people message me. Uh, So I'll be messaging them back. I'm like, okay, that's what you want. You know, like for a lot of our stuff, we've done deals through the met through direct messaging on Instagram. Mm -hmm. So it's like, they're like, Hey, where's that shirt that I wanted? And I'm like, Oh my God, dude, I gotta be honest with you. I messed up. I completely forgot <laughs> that you ordered that shirt. I did get the money. I know I'm such a bad person, but I'm shipping it out today. Or, you know, I got that ordered for you now and it's, it should be there in a week or something mm-hmm. like that. Um, so that's been one of the biggest things is just making sure you set aside that time and, and get all that stuff done. Um, but another part of it is just realizing that sometimes people buy stuff just for the brand and not even for, like what they're actually getting, you know, you might provide a better value for people, but that's not always what they're looking for. So learning to do what the customer wants and trying to figure out what those customers want has been a a big 
struggle with this process as well. But it's also been a lot of fun. Uh, I mean, one of my mottos is keep struggling so I can't really ever be upset when, when things are hard. You know, it just means that you're taking that next step and leveling up, so to speak. Yeah, just keep falling forward, you know? It's like, yeah, yep. all right, just keep, keep uh, yeah, picking up those, uh, uh, I don't know, picking up the headbands every morning or whatever it is. But just, yeah, keep, in, keep moving forward. We, we, maybe we got to get you on like a POS ordering system, you know, something like that. Like that may help out a little bit. Yeah, but, uh, yeah we're working on systems. We're working on systems, spreadsheets and whatnot that at least I can write it down somewhere. Have one spot to keep coming back rather than trying to look through 50 messages. Like, hell yeah, that already sounds more professional. It's just yeah. you mentioning <laughs> spreadsheets already sounds way better. Uh, we got to love that. But, uh, you know, a, a, another great question. I mean, we're, we're getting towards the end of night, um, and we do still have something to announce a little later on, so stay tuned for that. Uh, but I guess, you know, one kind of final question I wanted to ask both you guys and get your opinion on. Um, why do you keep coming back? You know, paintball obviously is something that takes a lot. It can give a lot, too. You know, you can have those moments of, you know, being elated with your team when you uh, get to a goal. But it is something that requires a sacrifice to compete in or to be with uh whether that's you know just giving up your weekends you know simple things like that what what is the motivating factor for both of you guys to lace up the cleats every weekend fill up the tank and go out there and shoot some paint you want to take that one chavi you have our seniority <laughs> all right no problem that's right uh you know i, I think it's a lot of things uh I think it has to be a lot of things because <clears throat> we are getting giving choked up, so up ladies and gentlemen. It's so important. Yeah. <laughs> it's so emotional for me. Uh, but yeah, I think, I think it has to be a lot of things. Cause if it's just one thing, I don't think you stick with it through all the stuff that you have to go through for paintball in particular. Um, but for me, I think one of the, the bigger things is the people, you know, like, there's other things where I can get adrenaline if that's all I wanted. You know, I can go skydiving. I'm sure I get a lot of adrenaline from that. There's other things that I can fail at. You know, I don't play Call of Duty anymore, but I used to. So if I went and tried to play like I used to, I'm sure I'd suck. You know, so <laughs> I could fail at that and try and struggle and get better. But I don't think there's anywhere that that kind of brings all of that in with good, really good people all the time. Like I've obviously there's bad people in painful, there's bad people in everything, but I've met so many genuinely good people through paintball like that's by far the the majority of who i've met through paintball is just the amazing good, definitely people. outweigh the bad yeah and I, that's what keeps me coming back you know like we have a great family of people legitimately obviously four of them are all family but like chavi said like we feel like family like those guys have never made me feel like anything but family they they take care of us you know we even throughout this season like Chavi said, we all get really mad, right? Because we we hate losing. All of us hate losing. We're super competitive. We we made a rule about I think a third or halfway through the season where you couldn't leave practice until you told all your teammates that you loved them and gave them a hug. Because we were leaving because we were mad, right? Like like oh I'm so frustrated right now. I'm just gonna get undressed. And I'm gonna leave. Well then everyone's like oh is he mad at me? No, I think he was mad at me. Oh no, I didn't think he was mad at all. Like what do you mean he was mad at me? Mm -hmm. So it's like all that confusion's not helping anybody either. So we just came together and said this is what we have to do before we can leave. And that kind of stuff is exactly what I love about paintball is the people and the relationships that you make. Beautifully said. Agreed. Agreed. That, without a doubt. That, no, that's for you too, yeah. yeah, just just the relationships that created, man, just in the sport um you know and just the support around playing the sport and i call it a sport because you practice you know you grind you sacrifice your time you know you do all these things to become something to become good at something great even you know and um it's a sport we're no longer having that debate it's it, we, yeah. we're well past that this is a fucking yeah, sport all right ex exactly so but just just that and then it also helps just seeing like um like with my my guys with the Luke cows and Scott, like I have I just have another family, you know. When I got married recently in North Carolina, you know, Scott and the Luke cows were there, you know. Shit, Caleb, Trenton, Johnny, and uh, Colt were my my groomsmen. Mm -hmm. You know, they stood up in my wedding, like they were there, and just that's this is why I stay in it. It's just the relationships that I created. And just the people in the sport, man, like, especially around fit, like the atmosphere is just so amazing. Like I can, I know I can go to fit and I'll be having a shit morning or not even a shit morning. I just like not feeling it. And then I'll go to fit and just everybody there like, Javi, what's up, Javi? Like, oh, there's a fit guys. Or like, 
like dirty stuff. Like we're just, it's just that atmosphere, you yeah. know, and that and that definitely what helps keeps me there and stays there is just it just feels good, you know. It just it just feels nice, you know, and that's yeah. I think I what think- everybody wants. So. Uh, for sure. And I think, uh, you know, you guys really do live up to the acronym that your guys' team is called. I think a lot of people don't know that FIT stands for something. Um, could one of you boys yeah. say it? I think, yeah, it'd be better. Yeah, family, family integrated team, baby. Yeah. Yes, uh, I think a lot of people think PB FIT stands for like, you know, fitness through paintball or something like that. No. Fitness no, dick it's... in your mouth. I mean, <laughs> God damn it, Hatch. Love you, buddy. Uh, really he's like, I, had to he's like, I was itching. I had to he's like, shit. I was tweeting. <laughs> but, uh, but, but yeah, for sure. I mean, family integrated team, that's what it stands for. And that's, you know, I, from what you boys just said, that sounds like that's both the, you know, reasons that, you guys are willing to go spend every weekend out at you know pb fit and you know spending time out there that that and so and sometimes like yeah like we get the outside questions like our parents like like yeah and like and like whenever i visit, i just visited like my parents for thanksgiving and they were they they, they actually are now into it at first they were like mm, i don't know but now they're like all about it because they understand like it's it's a whole new world when it comes to paintball and it's it's cool to see like you know it's cool to see that they see that and so like they even asked me like how'd y'all do a cup or like you know how's like you know the hydro business doing like they're actually like being more involved which is great because we want that we want people on the outside world to see into like our world so Mm -hmm. shout out hydro by the way i actually need to try the uh v2 of their knee pads i was talking to dan shelley about them uh apparently they're Mm -hmm. sick I haven't worn knee pads for all the time I've been doing media and I think I'm finally at the like I hit a quarter century and all right I'm gonna bitch out and get a pair of knee pads now because yeah my knees <laughs> after some of these events are killing me oh definitely do and we'll take care of you so like they're just phenomenal knee pads man like I use I have big ass knees too they always say like damn dude you have big ass knees <laughs> like, I'm a skinny person so like those knee pads are lifesavers oh yeah nice. I, I they make some great products i i like how uh there's been a couple times i've seen like jd will do kind of you know talking about the product and kind of explain it and you could just tell there's like so much passion there to just create a great product you know like that man is the most perfect storyteller (laughs) yep no for sure (laughs) watching him watching him and is it sarah i want to say yes sarah yeah sarah him and sarah watching your guys's games is so entertaining oh. they are they're, they're more anxious and paranoid than you guys playing <laughs> like it is it is amazing it, freaking oh god like i can't describe the or describe the energy that is coming out from them but it's just this like oh let's fucking go like uh, yeah, yeah it's it's they're, it's they're amazing holding each to other see. and yeah they're, they definitely dedicate as much time as us, if not more, into into this. So them, them they're phenomenal people in in this game, like mm-hmm. hands down. I, you know, we always talk about on this show, kind of the the patrons of paintball. You know, the people who are, are supporting paintball, who are getting paintball out there. And I think you know both Sarah and JD are huge members of that. You know, they're they're people yeah. who are you know yes they're they're running a business, they're trying to make the best stuff that they can, but it comes from a love. It comes from a I yeah. saw what this did for my family and my boys, and I want to, you know, give that to other people who, you know, can get an opportunity to play this great game. That yeah, dude, and, and and I can and I see it too because I used to live with them for a couple, like two years, I think. There you go. Um, before yeah. I got my own place with my <laughs> wife, and yeah. just just them in general, like whenever like they legit like wanted me to come play for them, so they opened up a room for me to stay with them until. I was able to until my wife came down from North Carolina and we got our own spot. Like that's how amazing they are. Like and they treated me like like their son from day one. No like stepson type shit, like, oh, you eat after us or like <laughs> they stuff like that, you know, like in the movies. Like no, they, they weren't, weren't living very, under the stairs. No, like I had did they, room, bro. Did they make you sign a legal paperwork? Like are we gonna hear the next no. Michael Orr is Jonathan Chavez? Oh, or? Shit. <laughs> no not at all like so it wasn't a tilly it, situation it, all right okay no not at all they, <laughs> they, they 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 saved me for sure like 100 percent. they are phenomenal people i that's awesome i couldn't yeah. talk i couldn't talk never talk bad about them that's how great they are 
You do not sure. find very many people like that. Like no. in, gen- in anything. You know, not, not even people in anything. You almost you don't find very many people like that. Hundred so, percent. I agree. Shout out to them. They that they sound like amazing people and I gotta they I are. gotta meet them. You, yeah. you definitely do. And as soon as you do it, you're like, it's true. <laughs> yeah, well, because I remember when I went down for for X Ball, like you know, I at first I didn't even know JD was a Lucao. I was just like, oh wow, like you know, okay, there's yeah, there's guys out here. He's you know, he's involved with this. He's okay, damn, he's running this field, hello well. And then I was able to like put together the full picture of the family and how everything works together. And I was like, holy crap, like it's it's just a beautiful thing that they've done down there not just for the pb fit squad but for those other dallas based teams i mean 100 pb fit is a field of dreams type situation like it is they've built an amazing facility and more and more people are kind of finding out about that and and moving their way you know to go play there or to at least you know go down for a mech x ball and, and see what all that hype's about one of the most fun events i've ever played in my life i still a year and a half later i'm still talking about it because it was an absolute blast I'm and back. you come back. I want to go so yeah. bad. Dude. I know, dude. When I saw you guys had the A's jerseys, I was oh god, it hurt so bad. The fact that I wasn't there to get one of those because oh god, they were they were fire. Uh, I actually I have a merch piece that I did a couple years ago that's also based off that like same like athletics jersey oh, style. Athletic, and, yeah, so yeah, yeah, nice. Yeah, so and that was my team growing up. So yeah, those are uh, I thought I thought those were dope pieces. It. But yeah, no, it's it. uh, it's it's awesome what's going on down there in uh in texas paintball and uh yeah i mean you guys are kind of the culmination of that right now um you know we've uh we've seen it in the past be best kids in texas x factor stuff like that and now i mean in the 2023 it's moving more into you know the pb fit i mean even hell some of the fsu notorious guys like you know that's kind of you guys are that next generation of paintball that's you know rising out of texas which has always been a a very hot you know reading ground for great players in this game oh yeah texas paintball like i mean i talk about it all the time against our team with with our team is like you know there's there's west coast paintball east coast paintball and there's texas paintball right and the important thing is florida being able too. to florida is its own with, spot you know what valid valid <laughs> very true um so it when i tell it to my guys where it comes to like studying make sure you guys know kind of all the different styles to play against you know and obviously like the individual players just have their different style like the way you were talking about chavi where you know mm. you develop your own style where it's not even east coast west coast text it's your own style right and there's yeah. you, you start finding players like that that make their own style but usually um in the lower divisions for sure you can be able to tell like a florida team a texas team you know a california team stuff like that mm. so well uh i i know it's starting to uh to get laid out there for you boys appreciate both you guys jumping into a call uh yeah central central time zone that's the one thing that sucks you know everyone's on uh on different times thanks for the thumbs up scott i don't know what just came up on your thing that was sick appreciate that (laughs) that was some Um, brando shit right there uh i will say we do have one more thing we got to get through uh before we get out of this show so um so scott you want to announce it man uh yeah sure sure uh you know I, I love what you guys are doing here on the podcast i think you guys are doing something great for paintball in general and uh i'd love to show my support and uh my company's support or our company's support i run it with a couple other guys uh so wealth will be uh, another sponsor of the podcast so what? yes you guys oh. i just added the logo on screen wealth is becoming a, a you know another kind of presenting sponsor for from the sidelines um, we hit those. <laughs> we hit those. <laughs> yeah, uh, it was you know it was something I saw, I reached out to Scott about, and I thought it was just a, a very uh, you know a, a, a good partnership because I think you know both of our brands are kind of trying to help promote and grow paintball in ways that are very similar to each other, and we just you know we do it in different ways. You know we do it with our content and entertainment, and you guys are trying to do it with some awesome you know kind of merchandise pieces as well as like you know accessory pieces that have been really awesome so yeah no we're, we're happy to announce uh not just yet because the the website and everything's been getting changed over like we were talking about earlier with uh, getting some systems in but uh there there will be a uh, you know a, a from the sidelines code soon that can uh you know help people get you know a couple dollars off over at wealth if you're picking up. something up 
Um, I do want to show off one of the pieces I actually have from you guys. It's it's one of my favorites because it's also co-branded with uh, 40, but oh. his never give up friend head, headband. I love this one. It's got the little people on it. Who's got the You're not wearing that one? writing. It, it, it is going to go on my mask next year. I'm going to double strap this with the one that Micah gave me. Um, mm. So yeah, shout out to Will. He gave me a copy, you know, copy of this at Cup. So I really appreciated this and uh, and yeah, so looking forward to uh yeah working with you guys and uh promoting the you know promoting the brand but also just promoting the sport and uh helping people earn their welts you know oh yeah absolutely hey also <laughs> quick question man. quick question y you know today was tuesday right yeah yeah welts mm -hmm. posted there's a lot on, on welts wednesday no stuff today yeah. <laughs> there's nothing up there right now that was oh. for like a 50 minute period where i definitely thought it was wednesday all of a sudden it's fine <laughs> Okay. Once again, there's a lot of pieces moving around here. Okay, I we're seeing like, that. We're seeing that. that. I was gonna call. You. I was like, well, Scott, you know, it's not Wednesday yet, my guy. But okay, yeah. all right, perfect." <laughs> <laughs> but yes, on Wednesday we definitely wear welts, and that's gonna be tomorrow. That's what we're gonna do tomorrow. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, guys. I mean, thank you so much for both of you guys for you know coming on the show, giving us some time um shavi real quick did you kind of have you know any final thoughts or anything you wanted to get off your chest while you're here on air no man i appreciate you having me on uh you know it's kind of last minute i just appreciate you giving me the time so screen time yeah of course and appreciate you coming on dude funnily enough i mm -hmm. i definitely had in the back of my mind that i wanted to get you on at some point throughout this off season so the mm -hmm. fact that you know this lined up and he who shall not be named ended up having to drop out it was it, it worked out it was it was great it was it was perfect uh so yeah i'm definitely definitely glad you were able to uh give us a couple of hours of your time tonight i appreciate that man scott oh, round number two does it get easier the second time is it like you know the more you do it the more reps you get i guess i guess i enjoy myself on these though these, these are good times i could talk about paintball all day uh, I do want to give a shout out to Verbal for all the amazing content he does for us. Love that man. I and then Verbal. Hydra, Chris as well, because Hydra is, you know, paintball fit and Hydra one and one and the same. So shout out to them as well. And then Welts. Hell yeah. Well, it's amazing. All right, guys. Well, uh, Hatch, I'm going to need you to line up a code word of the week. I got to go through my normal spiel. Uh, hey, if you made it this far in the show, drop a rating. Come on. I mean, you, you've mm -hmm. listened to an hour and 50 of us talking. You've obviously enjoyed it. So just drop five stars. It's free. Takes 10 seconds to do. And uh, you could have been done through the time I'm been talking to this. You could do it right now. Come on. I'm waiting for you. Go do it. All right, we'll continue the show. Uh, you can also subscribe on all those platforms as well. It makes us look good to, uh, you know, to the to the analytic people. Um, but so just, you know, hit the little button, YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcast. Just going to have the show ready for you whenever we drop it. That way you do uh, have no delay in being able to check it out. Go head over to the Patreon, patreon.com slash mafia underscore productions. Uh, that's where you get all the access to bonus content as well as access to this show a week early. So uh, we you know, recorded this uh, a week ago if you're listening to it on the uh, public timeline. But uh, but yeah, you could come check out the next episode right now. If uh, you know, you're know you doing that, it's probably ready to go on Patreon. So go ahead over there at patreon.com slash mafia underscore productions. Uh, we got the merch site with XXV the label. We uh, appreciate michael over there that's uh who i was talking about earlier when uh, i was shouting out a uh, achilles because uh yeah he's he's going through it right now but uh we got you know our couple couple pieces that we've had up there with him and uh yeah definitely appreciate him over there we also uh have our other two sponsors of the show just off camera i had to reach for it we had liquid iv uh the hydration multiplier look if you're out at a field in burning texas and you're dying Throw some of this in your water. It's going to help out. It's got electrolytes. Uh, it's got a whole bunch of vitamins. Uh, it's got all the right things to keep you hydrated and performing at that peak level for your whole uh, your whole time you're out there. Uh, also, hey, if you're hungover, it works for that too. Come on, let's just be real. Um, yes, head over to Liquid IV. Uh, use promo code MAFIA underscore MAFIA. You're going to get 20% off and free shipping. And uh, yeah, they've got great flavors. Uh, we talked about it last week, but the variety pack is out now. So if you don't know which one to pick, grab that and try out a couple and see which one your favorite is. And then lastly, but definitely not least, we got Nectar Energy, N-E-C-T-R dot energy. It is the little pouch that's going to pep you up. Uh, it looks similar to, you know, Snus or, uh, you know, Zin, one of those tobacco products. But uh, the major difference being there is no nicotine or tobacco in here. Um, the two uh, ingredients in there are caffeine and a neurotropic called 
acetylcholine uh, cognizine cognizine acetylcholine something like that uh and yeah so uh you can head over there uh nectar energy is gonna you know help keep you boosted up uh, i know hatch loves to use it when he's driving home from practice and stuff like that a uh, little lip pouch you can throw in nectar n-e-c-t-r dot energy slash mafia productions all one word over there that's gonna be uh the code for you as well so you could use mafia productions to uh buy two and get one for free they have a couple of new flavors so throw those in your cart see which one you like the best one of them's gonna be showing up for free uh i've got the ice mango and the fresh mint over here i definitely like the mango um that is our sponsors for the week and next week hopefully we'll uh yeah we'll be able to talk about welts a little more and uh direct you guys over on there mm -hmm. um hatch do you have a code word lined up i do and if you're listening this far into the episode make sure to uh d this one don't just dm us make sure you dm dirty stew and jay chavi make sure you welcome them to pro so this week's this week's uh word, word or phrase of the week welcome to pro because seriously, you guys deserved it. You guys killed it. We like that Appreciate one. Congratulations, and you guys. Thank if you. this is uh, one Thank of your you. first shows with the code word of the week, just drop it in the comments. Send a DM to one of us. Just let us know that, hey, you're hanging out and uh, that you were here for the whole show. We definitely appreciate you guys. Shout out Mike Ryan, Christopher. You know, those guys who do it every week. Appreciate you. Mm. Um, well, I th th that's a show, guys. That That's a podcast. Uh, you guys saw how the sausage was made, and uh, now it's going to ruin podcasting for uh, the rest of your life. Um <laughs> thank you so much to our two guests scott stewart and jonathan chavez one more time appreciate both of them for giving us some of their time for our other two hosts we got them here every single week we got brandon brando baird uh mr stephen hatch up top best mustache in the game of paintball that's okay, all i'm dude. gonna say uh mm. my name is ryan mafia moffitt and as always we're gonna catch you guys on the next one take us on home hatch bye <laughs> see you guys later